Billy, this is your hot seat, cool throne. Here we go. He can't hear you. Three. No, no, Jake can. Yeah, Billy, this is here goes. Shout here to we Mobile go. Muscle. Okay. Here we go. For the bench press. Two. And here it Two. goes. On today's part of my take, we have tennis pro Jeannie Bouchard. First time we've ever had a tennis player on the show. Great interview in person, in the studio. Awesome time. We also have our good friends Pat and Joey from the Out and About podcast, uh, our colleagues on for the first ever Guys on Guys. We're going to talk a little NBA playoffs. We're going to also see Billy try to hit his one rep max live on the show. Go watch it on the Part of My Take YouTube as well. And Hot Seat Cool Throne. And before we do that, we are brought to you by our friends at Game Time. NBA playoffs officially are underway, and Game Time is the only place we're getting our tickets. We got tickets for the Celtics at Nets this Monday coming up with Game Time app. We will be in the building. We love the Game Time app, and they love the AWLs because they're giving away tickets to the Bucks at the Bulls this Sunday, April 24th, and two tickets to Celtics at Nets this Monday, April 25th. So... It's going to be tickets for Game 4 in Chicago, Game 4 in Brooklyn. All you have to do to enter is you download the Game Time app and tweet us a screenshot of your Game Time account with hashtag GameTimeNY or hashtag GameTimeShy for a chance to win two tickets. Again, tickets to the Bucks Bulls Game 4. Tweet GameTimeShy, hashtag GameTimeShy with a screenshot of your Game Time app profile and tickets to the Nets Celtics. Use hashtag GameTimeNY with a screenshot of your profile. Also, if you haven't used GameTime app yet, use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Download the GameTime app and tweet us a screenshot of your account with hashtag GameTimeNY or hashtag GameTimeShy for a chance to win two tickets to the Nets versus Celtics or Bucks versus Bulls game. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Game Time, the number one app for tickets. These NBA playoffs, if you are looking for tickets, use code PMT. You get $20 off your first purchase. We're giving away tickets for the Bucks Bulls Game 4 and Net Celtics Game 4. If you download the Game Time app, screenshot us your profile and use hashtag GameTimeChai or game time NY, and you will get uh, possibly free tickets to game four. Today is Wednesday, April 20th. The Warriors are back, but we also should make jokes about being high. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about the H-Man's birthday. But yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not a drug no. guy. Have not partaken today. Might partake later on this afternoon, but I feel like it's when people go to the bar on like St. Patrick's Day and all the old drunks in the corner are like, this is a day for amateurs, I'm a professional. You know, like four, 420 is the day when real stoners, real real ganja heads out there, they're like, not for me. You guys it, do it. It's legal everywhere, so it doesn't, it's, it's completely lost uh, the allure from 15 years ago when it was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And you, they'd show the video from Boulder where there were just billowing clouds mm -hmm. coming up. I'm, looking, uh, I'm yeah. looking forward to the early morning text that we'll get from Chris Long just saying, happy holidays. Yeah, he'd be like, hey, hey guys, we made another, another trip around the sun. <laughs> happy birthday to all of us. That's what he sends us every 420. <laughs> uh, but yes, the Warriors are back. I'd say that's the lead story. The Warriors are back. Maybe not for long because I just placed a future on them. But um, the Warriors are back. Yeah, I, I think we called that, right? Like, we're, we're the Warriors podcast. Nobody out there believes in the Warriors anymore. They all forgot about the Warriors. And they very quickly turned into the Warriors that we all know and love. It was the third quarter Warriors. That, like yes. that's, that's what we've always said about the team. But actually, last night's third quarter Warriors, that was the best third quarter Warriors of all time. They were awesome. They were incredible. There was, it was like, what, 70? It was, it was some run where they scored... I think it was I, it was like seventy points in nineteen minutes or something. Mm -hmm. or was, or maybe it was even more. It was crazy. We should note, by the way, uh, Hank and I are in Chicago for the dozen trivia, so we are not going to record after the games tonight. We'll be back to regularly recording after the games on Thursday. So we're going to talk mostly Monday games. We've got some great interviews for you. But yeah, that you're right, PFT. That was that was insane. What they did, what they put on. I do want to just because we have at times flirted with being a Nuggets podcast. Mm -hmm. 
and I want to say something for the Nuggets fans out there because they're going through it. It sucks. I Everyone's bashing Jokic because he he's not been good in this series, but he also has no one on his team, and everyone's trying to take away his MVP case for this year. So I went and looked back because I was just curious because the MVP is a regular season award. How many times do you think in the last 20 years – the MVP in the NBA has won the title. It's like never, right? It's So it's happened four times, twice by LeBron, Steph Curry, and then Tim Duncan in the 03, 2002, 2003. Mm-hmm. Now how many times has the MVP lost in the first or second round of the playoffs in the season they've won it? I think, wait, they've lost in the first or second round of the playoffs in their MVP season. In I, their MVP I season. I think it's a lot. I think it's probably like... 12 times it's a little less than that but it's it's seven times that that's happened and like obviously their team their guys have gotten to the uh western eastern conference finals but my point being is that it's a regular season award and a lot of times the mvp of the season is the mvp because he dragged a team that probably shouldn't have been where they were in the playoffs to the playoffs and then they get there and much like what's happening right now with the nuggets the Warriors are like, oh, you got one guy? Okay, that's not hard to stop in the NBA playoffs. Right. And you get this. And it's like Dirk lost in the first round. Remember that year where he lost to the Warriors? Yep. You had uh, James Harden losing in the second round, Russell Westbrook losing in the first round. So my, my, my long point here is I'm not taking away from the Nuggets or Jokic. The Warriors are just really good. And you can win an MVP, which he probably will, his back-to-back MVP. And that doesn't mean that you have the best team because that's just not what the award is. Yeah, and I think that that Dirk series, they were the the number one seed overall, right? Yes. And they were yes. playing against the eight seed Warriors. So I agree with you. I had the take that I thought the, the Nuggets could make some noise this season, which I'm not going to back off of because I think I was right in a sense. But here's what I was right about. The team, when they're healthy, I think is still a legitimate title contender. So they're obviously missing Jamal Murray. They're missing Porter. And Jamal Murray just came out today and said, I think he tweeted, y'all don't think I want to be out here. So like everybody that's saying Jamal Murray is the reason why he's not playing, he's saying, no, it's the team. I actually think what the Nuggets are doing, this is right now, this is the season before the season. So this oh. postseason is they, they kind of intentionally fucked up their team by keeping two of their star players out. People are going to forget about the Nuggets. They brought in Boogie. There's no better way to create just like a complete disaster than having yeah, Boogie fighting Cousins with everyone. on your yep. team. So what they're going to do is after this season's over, after this offseason's over, they're probably going to get swept by the Warriors, maybe steal a game. But they're going to get rid of Boogie Cousins. They're going to bring back the two of their three best players. And then they're going to be like, thank God Boogie's not here. Now we're all ready to go from day one as a team. I think next season's Nuggets, the day that, that the NBA Finals are over, I'm going to put a big future on next on year's the Nuggets. Nuggets. It's the season before the season. Well, so I'm I'm with you in everything you said except for the fact that like banking on Michael Porter Jr. being healthy is it's you just can't ever do that because he was he had back surgery in college and it's always like that's no knock on him. It's just hard for him to stay on the court. But yeah, they're they're done now. If you saw the post game all the quotes were like, "We got to stay together. Mm-hmm. We can't let our folk like. We have to stick together as a team. We got to we got to dig deep and find if find out if we're guys that fight through things like this. Just basically, the last gasp of a team that knows it's absolutely screwed because the Warriors are back. And then I'm I like the other big story from Monday night and these playoffs is the Sixers look awesome. And Tyrese Maxey has basically made everyone in Philadelphia forget who Ben Simmons was and is. And I have to ask, I have to kick it to our resident Philly lover in Henry Lockwood. Are you a little scared? I'm not a little scared. I'm also just focused on the Nets. You know, you, okay. you can only worry about the opponent in front of you. So, mm-hmm. and if we were to play the Sixers, it wouldn't be for a while. And I also have some uh, Philly love coming up from myself later on in Hot Seat Cool Throne. Oh, oh okay. nice. But, yeah, that was – we, we, we joked, like, the Heat were the most disrespected one seed and the Sixers felt like the team that everyone was picking against. And they've – two games, series isn't over, but those are two very strong statements on the level they're playing at versus the Raptors. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and Joel Embiid just he goes nuclear in these little yeah. in these little spurts. I think he had was it like 19 points in the first half last night or something crazy like that. Like he's 20 in the first quarter. He's yeah. he's dominant when he wants to be. And I think I don't think that he like takes plays off. I don't think that when he doesn't want to be, it's not because he like lacks any motivation. I think he just gets tired. Imagine just like the size of him, the amount of effort that he has to put forth to be dominant. It's got to be exhausting just to walk around. I think if I was Joel Embiid's size, this is why I'm short. But if I was his size and I was walking just down the street to work, I would just need to take a nap. Yeah. No, I mean it's 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 often said when it comes to the NBA like big men don't usually love basketball because it's very arduous for them. I mean, I, would you? I, I'm not saying Joel Embiid doesn't love basketball. I think he clearly does. Mm. But you see it often where big men are out there and their job is to just go and bang bodies for 45 minutes a night, run up and down, and also be freakishly big with huge joints, and it's got to suck. But he is he is like when he wants to be, dominate, he dominates – more than anyone right now in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be a hot take. I'm trying to think. I'm going through it, going through it. Uh, Kyrie, when he wants to dominate. I feel co- – no, I feel confident. I feel confident when I'm saying if, if Embiid wa- – if there's there's less of an answer for Joel Embiid when he wants to dominate than anyone else at this current moment in Wait, the NBA. So he should be the MVP. He should, yeah, there we go. And, and he should be the MVP because Jokic is about to get swept. Fucking bum. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm disappointed that we're not going to get to drop any any more big quesarito memes this off season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, have to be we also had we we had the Mavs uh, the Mavs Jazz series, which you can just tell the hierarchy when they throw th- that series on NBA TV, and you're like, oh, okay, yep, makes sense. Mm-hmm. We know where everything stands here, um, and that's no slight against the Mavs because if Luca was playing, it probably would be different. But I'm I'm staying firm. I've heard a little bit of pushback from some Jazz fans. I'm staying firm. I just want this team out of my face. And you should too because they don't like each other. And I don't know if you saw Quinn Snyder after, but Quinn Snyder looks like a dude like five years from the future who's lost all his money on NFTs. He just wears all black to all his press conferences. He's still got like kind of a young, stylish look, but he's got big bags under his eyes. And he just looks like at one second he's going to be like, yeah, we don't have – an answer for Jalen Brunson, and then next he's going to be like, yeah, I sent, sunk all my money into Bored Apes, and it didn't work out. I actually think he looks like a dude from the past. I think he looks like a sweaty <laughs> salesman, like a guy from – time traveler. He, he's the fixer that you see behind the scenes in, like, Mad Men. Anytime any of those guys gets arrested for, like, sexual assault, he goes and shows up with a case of money and bails him out of jail. He's just, Yeah. He's, always, he's also the, maybe the most consistent sweater that I've seen in the NBA. Like, he's not – He's not a uh, big sweater in in terms of like he doesn't sweat really through his suits that much, like you see with a Sean Miller. But he is always he's always glistening, and he he always yeah. has that like that dapper uh, like hairstyle that looks like he's I don't know he looks like a uh, the first jazz mu- musician that discovered heroin. Yeah, he's he's like Steve Lavin had that look. Remember yeah. Steve Lavin had that look where it was just that slick back where it's like, I don't know if you're greasy or you're really well put together. Just always on that line. I think they should allow Quinn Snyder to smoke cigarettes on the sideline. I think that would look good for him. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. He strikes me as someone who might offer you a clove, though. You'd be like, really, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, they taste better? No, it crackles when you <laughs> smoke it in. Yeah, it's so sick. Um, all right, so should we do predictions for tonight's game? Because we're not recapping. Again, Thursday we'll be back to the regular scheduled program. Just a weird night because we have trivia. Um, so let's do a prediction. You want to do a prediction for tonight's games? Let's do it. All right, Heat. we'll sound stupid. Go ahead, Hank. Heat, Timberwolves, Pelicans. Oh. Did you see the Chris Paul stat? No. Oh, yeah, Chris Paul, mm-hmm. by the way, Sunday night. We, we joke about Chris Paul because we, we like to go after our good friend Ryan Rossillo, who he, he said, I think his exact quote about Chris Paul's performance on Sunday night, he was like, everything that I do in my life, um, you know, watch too much NBA, don't have kids, don't have like a wife, don't have all these other things, and I just sit in, in as a recluse and watch NBA, it was all validated by Chris Paul's performance <laughs> on Sunday night. So he's good. He's, a, he's in a good mental spot right now. That's awesome. That's great to hear. I, I did see that stat. Are you talking about the Scott Foster stat? 
Yep. Yeah, what is it? 12 straight uh, playoff losses for Chris Paul and Scott Foster referees. Oh, man. That's incredible. That, dri- that, that dribble move he did was so sick where he was – he was just toying with the Pelicans. I don't even – I watched it so many times I couldn't really fully figure out what exactly he was doing, and it had everyone stunned, and he was he was incredible. I mean, I, I still – I put a future on the Warriors. I'm Dubs Nation because I think Chris Paul will eventually get hurt, but let's at least you know mention the fact that he was incredible on Sunday night. This is going to be the ultimate test of the Scott Foster trend because, like, there's no chance – there's no way in hell that, that the Suns should lose to the Pelicans after what yeah. we've seen from both these teams. Like, there's – there's no way that it happens, right, Hank? Twelve and zero. No, I'm saying there. It's gonna happen. All right, so I'll take the Pelicans on the on the spread, but I'm not gonna take the them straight up. Yeah, I, I like so. the Pelicans. I think I think the Heat and uh, I do think the Grizzlies will will bounce back, make it one one. I like the Heat also. I I'm gonna stick with the Wolves. Yeah, I like these Wolves. Aru. Yeah, fuck it, a, I'll I'll do it too. Wolf fuck Nation, it, I'm baby. sticking with the Wolves. All right, it's gonna be a Wolf I'm, parade. I'm, 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 Moneyline wol- wolvesing it. Yep. Yeah, you're right. What, no reason. You know what I did right there? That's when uh, when an underdog wins game one, yep. and you just sort of like assume like ah, you know what? It will even out game two. No, fuck that. Wolves are gonna wo- raised by wolves. Raised by wolves. Let's go. It's gonna be in Memphis. There's probably not gonna be another protester. I think maybe if there's a protester, maybe. I think that there should be one because w- if you're a Minnesota fan and you've seen the last two games. Get infiltrated by protesters. You've got a winning streak going during protest yes. games. Yes, you got to just protest. You have to. Find something new. Like I'm sure that the owner of the wolves has killed another bird since the last game. Let's yeah. let's make it happen. Stick with the trend. Did you guys see the video that John Morant posted on Instagram though to hype himself up? No. He posted the MJ clip about losing one game. Oh no! I gotta watch this. From the this last is gonna dance. decide. To search Jaw. Morant MJ on Twitter and it comes up. It's got a hundred thousand likes. I don't know how I feel about that though. I like John Morant, but I don't think if you're John Morant, you can be just out there posting MJ clips and being like, "This is so me right now." It's just him holding the baseball bat. All right, hold on. Yeah, he's. I I don't like that. I think you have to wait. You have to like let the team account post that for you. Or you have to have one of your oh. teammates post that about you. Yeah. I don't think you'd yeah, be like, but re- man, I'm so MJ, it hurts right now. But remember, the the number one uh, hype video of himself guy has a few rings, Julian Edelman. So, right, you don't but, know. But Julian Edelman's not out there being like, look at me, I'm I'm Wayne Corbett. You know, he's Wait, where other is it? I don't that. see it. I don't see I don't it on see his it. Uh, Instagram right now. But if you search on Twitter, it's like a viral video. It has 1.8 million views. Search- and it was posted by him? I mean, this screenshot says it was. It, was, it has 100,000. It says Jaw posting this on Instagram is crazy. Oh, no. So if he deleted, now it's definitely the T-Wolves. So it's either yeah. deleted yeah, that's or even worse. photoshopped. That's way worse. Oh, no. It wasn't deleted. Oh. It's, the, it's the second swipe on his uh, second most recent Instagram. Oh, wow. Oh. He, that's, I, so he kind of hit it. I would say that's that's even worse than deleting it, putting it as the second swipe. So you see the one where it says Morant on the white jersey? Swipe, and it's there. I feel like this is – that's. I like the fact that he's trying to motivate himself, but like that clip of MJ – He'd already wa- you know what I mean? There's there's a little different between Ja Morant in his current state in his career year three versus that clip of MJ. The so quote from MJ, mm. so what? We lost one game. Well, it'll be a dogfight tomorrow, but that's all right. Let's see if all that trash talking starts when it's zero zero instead of a five six point lead. That's where it hmm. starts. That's the sign of a good man. If you can talk shit when it's even score or when you're behind score. When you're ahead, it's easy to talk. T Wolves. T Wolves. This that is gonna MJ's blow words. up in our face. That's pumping him up. This is gonna blow up in our face. Grizz Nation is gonna be very mad at us. That's okay. That's all right. right. I, we I, made our pick. I still watch the last dance. I still like the pipe, Grizzlies. Pump himself up. I might even. Yeah. I might take the Grizzlies game three. You just can't. You, we can't go against what our heart is saying, and that's the Timberwolves are very, very fun, and the fact that there's been a protester at all their games is also very fun. Oh. They're a great story right now. Also. How have we not talked about this yet? Anthony Edwards. He yes. na- He named his dog Anthony Edwards Jr. Love it. That's an awesome move. I love that. I yeah. Met, I actually met a guy, uh, one of Fight's friends, that came to the beach house this summer. His name's Mikey. 
he's got a dog named Mikey Jr. And it was the best combination of all time. Like, you can't hate on a guy and a dog that have the same name. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I absolutely agree. It also reminded me of our boss Dave uh, bet on the Cubs the other day because uh, Mark Leiter Jr. was on the mound and he thought it was Al Leiter Jr.'s son. Oh, wow. I can't believe White Sox Dave did that. No, <laughs> no. Dave Portnoy. <laughs> oh, okay. He, I guess he's <laughs> our boss like, too. Being like, he, he tweeted, he was just like, Mark Leiter Jr. isn't Al Leiter Jr.'s son. <laughs> All right, hand yeah, up. No. <laughs> when, when I drafted uh, when I drafted Raul Mondesi, Alberto Mondesi, last year, I thought it was the same Raul Mondesi as I watched yeah. in, like, 1993. So Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's Why not? Legends never you. die. One last thing before we get to Hot Seat Cool Throne. Uh, Kyrie got fined $50,000. And I thought Kevin Durant's statement on it was, like, incredible. Kevin Durant, I don't think I've ever switched from not liking an athlete to loving an athlete harder than I have with Kevin Durant. It's crazy. So his – I don't know if you saw his statement, but he essentially was like, the reason why Boston fans are feeling this way and are so vocal about it is because they once loved Kyrie – and then he left. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with fans. Like when I went, when I left OKC, the same fans that were rooting for me one day were calling me soft and cupcake the next. And that's just part of sports. And you can't get upset about it. You can't you can't take that personally. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Kevin Durant, like, you're right. No, no, he's a million percent right. There are two reasons why fans end up hating a player from another team. One is if they just kick the shit out of you constantly. Like absolutely destroy you and your soul and own you repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly again and again on national television. Okay. I'm thinking... Um, All right, you're going too specific. Derek it's Jeter. Specific I was talking about now. Derek Jeter and then Boston. <laughs> That's why Red Sox fans hated Jeets. And then uh, if a player that you used to love turns his back on you. That's yeah. I think that's a legitimate reason. Like he, Kevin Durant, sneaky, is like a, a pretty good psychiatrist and just tapped into yeah. the emotions of sports fans. Um, I, I don't... If you're Kyrie... You stomped 50, on Lucky, bro. He yeah, but you're gonna get you're gonna get the, you're gonna get the smoke brought to you, <laughs> and and he even said too, um, he was talking about Kyrie like his gestures to the fans and everything. He's like, some days you might be he might be into it, some days he's not. Like this is, I don't know. I just thought it was very interesting. Kevin Durant just being, being like, we're human. Just because next you know game two happens, if he's not the same type of back and forth with fans, it doesn't really mean that it's he's lost intensity or anything. It's just some days it hits you a different way and you respond a different way. Kevin Durant, fucking smartest athlete of all time. Yeah, the ecosystem of sports isn't just always as simple as like a guy being like, I paid money for the ticket so I get to yell at you, or then the other player being like, just because you paid money for a ticket doesn't mean that you can yell at me. It's not that simple. It's like there are actual complex emotional relationships that fans have with their teams, with their opponents, with former players, with current players, and it goes back from the from the player to the fans as well. Like sports is Kevin Durant actually beautifully summed that up in a way that I think not many people have thought of. But I also yeah. th- I also think that Kyrie Irving would be like fifty thousand dollars to flip off all the Celtics fans like three times. Yeah, that's easy. Well worth the price of admission right there. I love this yeah. rivalry going back and forth. Hank, do you think that uh, it, he should have been great. suspended? And wait, let me just one last thing because Kevin Durant's last statement on it was like perfect. He said it's rooted in love. They once loved you, once cheered for you, and brought your and bought your merchandise. Had life altering experiences coming to games watching you play. Sometimes it gets a little dark and deep, but that's just how the human brain works. We understand all that, and the fans understand where we come from too because we have our own platforms and speak on stuff like this. It's healthy once everyone understands both sides. That's perfectly said. Mm -hmm. Once you understand why a fan is mad at a player and why a player has a reaction back to the fan, it's like this is this is great. This is what sports should be. This is actually how us as guys learn about emotional relationships with each other. Is when when an athlete explains it to us, and we're like, "Oh shit, yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm mad." Makes sense. It's a feeling called jealousy. And it, it is crazy how much like I, I love Kevin Durant now. I, I if you had told me four years ago, I don't think I've ever switched this much on one player. Where who? <laughs> J- no, because JJ I still can say is sometimes has loser moments. I don't think Kevin Durant has loser moments anymore. I think he's honestly him all the time. It's when he lost his burner and was like, "Here's who I am." Yeah. Everything kind of switched, and he was like, "I'm always on. If I if I clap back at you, that's what I'm going to do. It makes me feel good." 
Like, I don't know. It's I, just everything changed. I almost want to start hating on him again just in the hopes that he'll roast me. That's yeah. that's like that's how good he's been at the internet recently. I, I yes, I, like I agree with you. We used to call him. It was, mo- it was mostly you. You called him a baby back bitch. Oh, don't wow! Oh, come on, you're a part of it too. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. Kevin Durant's an awesome guy. Seems like a cool hang. Hank, how yeah. many games do you think Kyrie should have been suspended for? He definitely should have been fined more money. But uh, I saw some people chirping Boston fans because there was a, f- a chant at Fenway, uh, like a fuck Kyrie chant. Which I loved. To me, that's just a city, a city united. We're all on the same page. Doesn't matter what sport we're at. We all know where where the where the goal is, where our hate needs to be directed. I think that's a sign of a great sports town. Do you think that they should have played a game on Monday night, like going the the whole Patriots Day thing? You get the daytime Red Sox game, you get the marathon, and then you get a night game, Celtics against Kyrie. That would have been sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it's all great. It's it's sports are the best. This is why we watch. This is why we love it. So, Hank, Billy. you're calling New York a great sports town because they did it with uh, Trey Young first at the Yankees game. Sure. Wow. Oh, wow. That's Got high praise. There. That's high praise. That's yeah. a sign of a great along. sports town. Yeah. New York um, has great sports fans. Their teams just suck. That's not their fault. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do Hot Seat Cool Throne. Before we get to Hot Seat Cool, throw in a quick word from our friends at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs have the best shorts, joggers, pants in the game. I've been addicted to their pants. Here's a little pro tip. Bird Dogs have the best pants to travel with. So I was on an airplane to Chicago, wore my Bird Dogs. They have a zipper pocket. It's comfortable. It's fashionable. It's versatile. It's everything. And Bird Dogs has it all in. They also have their their shorts that are coming up summertime. Shorts are back. Keep the Gooch and Grundle cool and comfortable while doing literally everything this summer. Go to BirdDogs.com, enter promo code PMT, and they'll throw in a free Bird Dogs dad hat. That's BirdDogs.com, promo code PMT for a free Bird Dogs dad hat with your pair of Bird Dogs. When you think summer, think Bird Dogs. They're the only bottoms you need. You will not take these things off, I promise you. Birddogs.com, promo code PMT. Hank, you start. Hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is the charts, the radio this summer. Just anyone that likes to listen to music in general. I think it's people that go to bars, whatever. Uh, Drake posted a picture with Taylor Swift. Let's go. Which means there's probably going to be a song coming, which means oh, it's banger. going to get... Yep. Mm-hmm. It'll yep. probably be a good song, but it will get yep. murdered into the ground and just played... In for it. Everywhere, anywhere, at all times. She's, I love all it. Summer. She's and a bit old for for his taste, but, pre- but I true. I do think this is going to be like: Have we started the most ambitious crossover event of all time? Memes yet? Maybe if we added a Rihanna feature on it, it would just be that'd be it. I don't think that's happening. Okay, and then just oh, Kodak have, Black doing the intro. Who's who's got beef? I think there's a. I don't What's think the I remember there's Drake and Rihanna like beef. But oh, what about what about Taylor and Kanye? Possibly that would be that the, would be that, that would be the would be most the, ambitious crossover. Yes, ever. Th- that actually would be an ambitious crossover. That would be incredible. Uh, and then your cool throne. My cool throne is Meek Mill talking about great yes. sports fans, city of Philadelphia. I obviously have well documented my hate uh, towards Philadelphia and their fans, but I do like Meek Mill. I've always liked his music. There's an old video of him doing the in the tunnel before the game. It looks fake. There's like one of those trampolines that the cheerleaders use, and he runs full speeds, jumps, does a front flip, and lands on his feet, and everyone just kind of starts clapping. And he did it again last night, which just reinforced, obviously, it was never fake. It's just a hilarious video. Like he just he's he's good at doing flips. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's really good at doing flips. <laughs> and it's just not it's surprising. It's surprising for it's a surprising thing to do. It's a surprising thing to see. It makes me laugh every time. So that was you know shout out to Meek Mill. Shout out to Philly fans. I hope they advance this round just so he does it again. Yeah, I, I like any, yeah, it. It is very funny. I like it's it, hilarious. Yeah. I like any stadium that has like a pregame ritual in it. I know up in Seattle they have somebody raise the twelve flag. In Philadelphia, they have somebody like bang the Liberty Bell. They've got that guy at Texas Tech that jacks off into that metal thing on the sidelines or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I, I love I love when people do are one of the stadiums has somebody like that cranks a siren like an alarm that goes off I'm a big-time sucker for those the the uh, the horn at uh, Minnesota Yeah, blowing the fugal horn. Yep, the big drum in Kansas City. Yeah, those are great Yeah, those are all great if I was designing a, a team from scratch you better believe day one I'm having some like bizarre pregame ritual where I can bring in like the local celebrities uh, that that get the crowd going. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, PFT, your hot seat, cool throat. Okay, my hot seat is Billy football. Billy is uh, on the hot seat for something that happened today. You guys are in Chicago, so you missed out on it a little bit. Billy's ice dogging Billy's, me right uh, now. But what Billy's happened mad. was I, I saw Billy's reaction. He's not happy. What happened? Well, I'll try to walk you guys through it, and you'll you'll see some of this <laughs> on on stool scenes and and the whole nine yards because it was documented. Uh, Billy has done a great job of being a personal trainer to me and really a mentor and a nutritionist over the course of the last four months. He's getting me the supplements. He's, he's worked out with me here in the studio. And, uh, today I told Billy, I was like, Hey Billy, let's go in here. And before we do the, the, uh, podcast with the guys in Chicago, help me see if I can get my one rep max up because I was thinking maybe I could have a, put up a good number today. So Billy grabbed a bunch of people from the office. Um, I was just asking Billy to come down here, but he picked up like an entire hype squad to come into the studio to hype me up like a great teammate. nice great teammate and so i got on the bar put all up. the videos with people doing max outs it's like the whole team yeah, yeah it's a whole create that we had everybody yeah. we had kelly yep. keegs fran coach doug's everybody was in the room no one's in the office love it and and so i put up the 225 felt pretty good about it and then billy was like yo toss all the weight on there because billy saw somebody putting up a one rep yeah. max and he was like I got a one rep max. No, 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 Wait, let him finish. Can let I, him finish. No, you can respond. Let him finish. And so we, we know that whatever you say is not going to be the truth. <laughs> that is the truth. So so we put we put all the weight on, and Billy was like, which, which oh, is how much weight approximately? Two hundred seventy five. Exactly. I, we can make an okay. exact calculation because they are weights. And so we put two hundred seventy five <laughs> pounds on there, and I was spotting for Billy. That's a lot of weight. I don't want Billy to get hurt or worse injured. And so I'm standing over him, and we lift it up together. He pulls it down pushes up and after he pushes up the left arm buckles and it starts Doug. to sink and you can see that on the video replay and so i helped him bring it up because no. i didn't want okay. him to get hurt bring it up to the top and billy gets up uh, he's like did you touch it i was like yeah you were gonna die and he's like you fucking stole my max from me and billy stormed <laughs> out okay. he's been freaking out going up no. to everybody and no, telling everybody that's... in the office all afternoon wait, so that wait this is an easy solution just do it right now, Billy. No, I, I will do it right now if we get a makeshift clip. Because what actually happened was is do it he right did now. his max. I, I think we should do then, maxes on Tuesdays. Then it goes up on I'll a Tuesday. I'll do it right now. Do it right now. Let's do get it right something. Now. We'll tie That's it. the easy solution. Let's tie it up with something. Don't do this. He's going to get hurt. No, because no, what no, happened no, no, PFT, was. Do not touch we, the bar whatsoever. We didn't, we didn't have the clip. There isn't a clip on the left side of the bar. So, okay. Jake, what happened? What happened? PFT saved my foot. If, uh. There was no clip. The plate would have fell on my foot, and I would have had a because broken toe. Because the plate mm-hmm. started falling off. Because your arm off. buckled, Billy. No, watch okay. the clip. All right, no, so wait, wait, wait. Hey, this what, is very big, easy. Wait, no, Big Cat. So, so Jake makes a good point, uh, and also I don't know if you noticed this. No, no, Memes has created a new chart for the part of my take studio that's above Jake's shoulder. It's the current one rep max bench press list. For oh, all of us as a podcast, so I have to start benching. Well, no, we we just have you listed in second place, Big Cat, as father of two. And, nice. Uh, Jake is one thirty-five. Liam can pick up the camera. Hank is one thirty-five. I've seen Hank put up one thirty-five before, personally, with my own two eyes. And memes, I think I can bump that up. Memes is too much. And then Billy is in last place at not applicable NA because he hasn't completed one rep max. No. Yet. So what happened was, by the way, I said Billy, I didn't want to win. I don't know why. Max. Billy, I don't know why you're still talking. Just put up the weight. I will. Let's get a clip, though, because last time yeah, do it. the plates do fell off. Do it right off. now. Last time the plates fell off, and that's because why I buckled. couldn't. My, no, not because my arm buckled. Okay, so do just it. Just tie a okay. shoelace this around is, it. Yeah, Hank, yeah, am, I, it. am I going crazy? <laughs> just go do, do it. it. Okay, just do it. Yeah, just do it. Let's go, Billy. Let's go. Oh, I'm getting fired up. This is going to be awesome. Fires on his chest. Billy. Don't touch the bar oh, under no, any no, circumstances, no. PFT. By the way, everyone go uh, watch this at YouTube. This is a good way to subscribe. Watch out. You're in front of the camera. Someone's in front of the camera. Oh, Liam. All right, so go subscribe on YouTube. I'm afraid Billy's going to hurt himself, guys. No, 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 no. no, no. This is all going in the podcast. He doesn't want me to do it because he knows I'm going to do it. 
Yeah, Redemption, exactly. Billy. Redemption. Yes. This is awesome. He's tying. Oh, he's tying a, an electrical cord. <laughs> oh, All right, Hank and I will narrate. <laughs> he's tire, tying an electrical cord on the weights here as the clip. Um, do you think he got this? I actually think he will. Same with me. I mean, because I think he's. I think Billy. B Billy responds well. Billy ran a marathon to, like four hours. He's gonna do it. Right. He also say. responds when we, when we, well to embarrassment. Like if he gets embarrassed, he gets so upset that he then comes back and bounces yeah, yeah. back. When he had to, when he had to run a marathon, and he actually ran a marathon. That's that's kind of when. I, that's when. That's kind of when I gave him the like. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. The in these Jake's situations. Come over here and monitor the plate. If the plate starts to slip, he's gonna nudge it back. Horizontally, I'm not going to help Billy with the bar. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, and we'll, we'll narrate. It's he's he's laying down on the bar right now. Again, go watch on on uh, Part of My Take YouTube. Stretching, stretching. You should go out. watch on Part of My Take YouTube. Getting his arms loose. The he's shows are up earlier now. He's wearing a so camo he's sweatshirt. The the, he's yeah, he's he's, he's feeling, feeling good. He's I don't know what he's doing with his hair right now. All right, Billy. He's doing smelling salts. Let's go. Right he's breathing heavily. Jake has his Jake has his uh, also, I headphones boxed on. this morning. That's why I didn't want to max out. No excuses. I have I, have, yeah. I boxed for an hour this morning, yeah. so there's no glycogen in my muscles. Okay, no excuses. Here he goes. Oh, he's doing the smelling salts, which some may say is illegal. Ow! Oh. Oh. Ow! If he if this drops right on his chest, it's gonna be Ready? so funny. Here we go. Nah, he's got this. I think Three. he's got it. Too. Got this. I believe in him. Oh my God, Billy! The <sighs> Billy, this is your hot seat, cool throne. Here we go. He can't hear you. Three. No, no. Jake can. Yeah, Billy, this is here goes. Shout here to we go. Nobel muscle. Okay. Here we go for the bench press. Two. And here it goes. Oh. Three. The Mets just Two. won. One. Oh. Here we go. Here he goes. <laughs> And Let's go, Billy. and he's up. He's yeah, up. He's yeah. up. He's got it. Yeah. Easy, easy. Yeah. Easy. Fuck yeah. Easy. Fuck oh, that. and he just kicked half the studio over. <laughs> that was impressive. There we go. Yeah, I mean, we called it, Hank. Great we job, called it. Billy. Billy, good job. Billy, we called it. I'm I, so glad Billy. we got that over with. Yeah. I mean, there you so go. So much shit in the office today. Billy, so you you. You took off your headphones so you couldn't hear what we were saying, but you'll be able to listen hey, Billy, uh, back something? on the pod. Um, Hank and I both said that you were going to do it because we're like, the one thing that Billy does is he responds well to embarrassment. Mm -hmm. So all, we, all we, we that, said you were going to do it. All the shit that Billy was getting was very much so that he couldn't stop talking about it. Right. Of Going course, he attacked on all yeah. sides. It was, he was getting attacked. Can we, by, it, by, yeah. So in order just to tell the story fully, I think that we should put out the video of Billy... Failing, failing to yeah. do it, yeah. yeah before we put this video YouTube out. as well, yeah. yeah. It, it'll be on PMTV. Okay, It'll come out. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. PMTV. We'll put that out. perfect. I, I and then, and then watch, watch Billy do the actual, complete the actual bench press on the part of my take YouTube. Um, great job, Billy. Proud of you. Appreciate. Good job, Billy. Uh, my, uh, my cool throne. Where are we? Yeah, PFT. <laughs> my cool throne is Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold, oh. uh, future starting quarterback of the Carolina Panthers, because uh, Ben McAdoo was asked if Sam Darnold was a starter, and he said yes immediately. But then, record scratch, Ben McAdoo had to go in front of the press being like, and this is a quote, that is something that I should not have said. <laughs> so uh, Sam Darnold was named the starting quarterback for the Panthers for about, mm. I think, two and a half hours. And more importantly, we'll just, have those. just an excuse to get Ben McAdoo back in, in the national news because he is uh, he's looking smooth as ever. Him and Matt Rule probably – painting Charlotte red when they go out at night to the bars. Um, yep. He's looking awesome. I, I do miss having Ben McAdoo around. And it's very funny when you see a, like a, a very a naturally goofy guy like that always try to look stylish. I was liking yeah. it to like if, if Mr. Bean thought that he was actually James Bond and dressed yeah. accordingly. That's what you get with Ben McAdoo and his swaggy haircuts. It's it's awesome. I, I miss him being a head coach and uh, that – that oversized suit is one of the, my favorite pictures of all time. Um, all right, my hot seat is uh, burner accounts. So I was I'm in Chicago. I went and visited my 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 guys Waddle and Sylvie. Uh, they have a great show on ESPN 1000. I go on every week, but I went in person, and Sylvie, uh, who's a very very good host, the best in, in the business, he has uncovered Chris Bryant's dad's burner account, 
and uh, it feels good. I feel like we haven't had a burner account in a really long time. So the burner account, the uh, name is TWMB917. TW being because he, uh, Ted Williams is his idol, Chris Bryant's dad's idol. MB being, wait, what was that? What is MB? I don't remember. Something Bryant. Oh, oh, Mike Bryant, his name. Mm-hmm. Nine being uh, Ted Williams and 17 being Chris Bryant's number. And he just responds to everyone, uh, and he, he has some very funny response. He said to uh, someone who said, Cubs offered $200 million two years ago, but Boris said he could get you, Chris Bryant more. And he responded, ah, yes, another ignorant cockwomble stuck on stupid. Chris Bryant was never offered $200 million ever. In fact, the Cubs never offered him an extension, you stupid dumbass. Ha ha. <laughs> he already made $70 million. Ha ha. What was that word that he invented? Cockwomble. Cop, comp, wom, cockwomble. Cockwomble. I like those. Yeah. I like those guys that are like, this has been a fuck crustable of a day. Like people that just yeah. invent sayings that nobody uses. Cockwombler is going to make its way into the lexicon. I I don't know if I disagree ethically with revealing burner accounts or doxing people. Big cat. There's been a lot of that going around recently. Yeah. And yeah. so I think it's I. I, I have no problem with him having the burner account, but we have to like talk about it when it gets revealed. I I don't blame Chris Bryant's dad at all. I think it's a great move. I would do the same thing for my son. Like, why wouldn't you? It's just when it gets revealed, we have to have a good laugh about it. That's that's a fact. I love cockwombler. Wa- cockwombler is a great baseball dad word. And then yeah, memes, he also yeah. Go I, ahead. I was gonna say memes just texted us Brian Kelly's burner. Brian Kelly has a burner. Oh the 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 frog account. That's from the talk we had last week. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the um, the uh, the other one, it, you know, it's Chris Bryant's dad because a lot of them are aggressive. And then the one that actually made me laugh the most was uh, blog finds Matt Clapp, who who does a great job with the Cubs, tweeted that was easily the cheapest double of Chris Bryant's career, and he responded, makes up for the homer he hit that got robbed by Melky Cabrera against the White Sox a few years ago. <laughs> it's like, wh- uh, what? <laughs> so, I love that. He's, re- he's really fighting. I, yeah, I'm, I am, I want it very much on the record. Mike Bryant should keep doing this. He has every right to defend his son. We're going to laugh about it when we find it, but I love this. I, like, why wouldn't you do this? I like burner accounts, too. I might hop yeah. back on mine. I might get back into that lifestyle. That's It's fun just tweeting, just like replying to people, tweeting whatever you want with zero accountability. Yes, yes. Um, and then my cool throne, I have two. Duke is on my cool throne. John Shire finally cleaning up the program. Uh, Michael Savarino, Coach K's grandson, is hitting the transfer portal. So Probably be a name that's John, in high demand. Yeah, John Shire got inherited what a mess. What if he goes to Chapel Hill? This I, league. I have, uh, yeah. Actually, you know where he's going to drive go. there, Jake? Jake, <laughs> is he going to drive there? Be careful. You know where he's going to go. Uber responsibly. Right? Probably, yeah. probably a good culture fit up at Syracuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, shout out John Shire. And then my other cool throne is Canada because I've decided um, I put a future on the Calgary fl- Flames. <laughs> I- I'm going to bring a cup to, to Canada. Personally, I want to bring a cup to Canada. So, if anyone wants to hop in with me, they, they're they a very fun team. They score a lot of goals. They probably won't win the cup, but I put a future on them. Substantial future. I'm a Calgary Calgary Flames fan for the playoffs. I'm bringing a cup to Canada. I don't think they've had one in like 25, 30 I, years. I, I'm doing it. I think you got the wrong team, Big Cat. The Leafs? The Leafs. I think this I is the year. I about the Leafs. People this, said. Yeah. Well, Austin here's the thing. Matthews is playing well. I tweeted, no, can the, the Flames Leafs. win the cup? I tweeted, can the Flames win the cup? And everyone responded no. So I was like, okay, yeah, they probably can. But I'll add the Leafs too. I might do it, but you know what? I'll do it. I'm, At Leafs and Flames. Arlen. I'm, I'm, no, you can't. No. <laughs> to, I'm on the Leafs win? already. That's the play. The Leafs are right. – this is their I'm year. I'm adding the Leafs. This is Leafs year, man. It's happening. I'm Leafs and Flames. Austin, I'm bringing the cup. Austin Matthews is playing really, really well right now. They're smoking teams. Also, Calgary is one of those – I always forget that Calgary is out west. For some reason, I always think that it's out east. But yeah, they no, do the stampede I'm adding, out there. I'm adding the Leafs. I, I, I just want to bring a cup to the fine people of Canada because I'm sick of them not having a cup and us making jokes. Hank's watching me put it in. Boom. Listen, Leafs and Flames. I'm not sick of making the jokes, but I, I did also take out a future on the Leafs. I think that they can do it this year. I, there's no yeah. chance. Like, there's no way. I think they've actually exhausted all the heartbreaking ways to lose in the playoffs. I think that there's just. They can't find another way. The only way out right now is to win. 
that's what they're going to do. Yeah. I, I just – I was trying to figure out because the Blackhawks are not in the playoffs or even close. And I do love – I love NHL playoffs. I was like, I need to have a rooting interest. My rooting interest is just simply bringing a cup to Canada. Fans are back, One man. way or another. We, I'm going to do it for the Canadian what, people. You know what we should do? We should bring back Todd and Gordo. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, Billy. I, I got a good one. Uh, my hot seat is the USFL. Uh, running back Davion Smith was cut from the uh, Pittsburgh Maulers for ordering pizza instead of chicken salad. Yeah, so, I think a, this was a work. Yeah. A, yeah, it was weird. The story doesn't add up in my mind. So basically the Pittsburgh Maulers sent out a memo saying that he had violated three team rules in 24 hours, and that was just the last straw. This was all aired on league programming, sort of an inside the USFL mm. type show, and he mm. claims that he never mm. violated any league rules. So it's all starting to look murky. The USFL and the Pittsburgh organization is not looking too good, and Smith is very angry. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm with I'm with Hank on this. I think it's it's a work. Yeah, it's absolutely stay woke on this because what's going to happen? They're going to bring him back, and then that'll be a storyline going into one of the games, and people will be like, "Oh, yep. look, it's the guy that got caught for the pizza." Yep. Everybody tune in and watch this. Yep, agreed. My question is: It was it chicken salad? Or a chicken salad, you know what I'm saying? Because chicken salad's pretty disgusting. Wait, like, what? the option what? was chicken salad or pizza, and they said we only got chicken salad. And he's like, "Can I have pizza?" And it's like, "Are you okay with that?" And he like said like a obnoxious remark. Wait, apparently. you think chicken salad's disgusting? Well, like chicken Caesar salad's one thing, but like chick like chicken salad that's like potato salad. Yeah, no, chicken it's salad's good. good. Yeah, like on a sandwich, it's good, dude. That's just Go mayonnaise. Eat. There is mayonnaise in it and chicken. Yeah, but it's also got celery. I, and look, depending and on how you, white you are, it's good on a bagel. raisins and walnuts. Yeah, you, I'll walk it yeah, back. Yeah, you do the you, grapes and walnuts, the Sonoma. That may be an unpopular opinion. That may be my uh, calamari. That's just me. No, it's not non pi Like, I think there's probably a lot of people who don't like chicken salad, but saying it's disgusting is, I, I can't agree with that. I, I think that chicken salad sometimes unfairly gets lumped into the egg salad discourse. That's why. Yeah, which is egg salad is fun to make and nothing else. Yeah, because like it it's, sloshes it's gross. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Egg salad is good from the moment you make it to like 10 seconds later, and yeah. then it's bad after that. If you have like a, a six-year-old and you want them to like just do something to stay occupied, let them help out making the egg salad. They'll have fun. Don't actually eat it. Right. Just throw it in the garbage. All right, you're cool, Thron? Is our digging buddy, our digging bro, who we talked about on Monday's episode, got a little update for us? So, all right, so I've spoken with my boyfriend, and after a good long chat, I can successfully say mission accomplished. I sat him down when he came home Thursday night and seriously voiced my concerns both about his safety and about our relationship. He hadn't realized how big an effect this had been having on me in regards to our relationship, and he immediately said that he was going to cut the time he spent out there in half. He said that Ooh. we could spend the entire weekend Wait, together, and we pretty much bad. did. Friday this night bad. was spent at home. And we went out for a nice dinner Saturday night after spending the day together. We were going to have a Why nice lazy dinner Sunday, when you have a hole. But I could tell that he was getting kind of antsy and almost nervous after church day. So I told him that he could go ahead and go to his tunnel early if he wanted to. I won't lie, I was kind of hoping that he would stay at home. But we decided to go back out, which was all right by me. I also talked to him about my concerns regarding gases and that y'all made me realize it should be conscious of. And he said that he'd work to get some sort of ventilation system installed ASAP. Um, so basically, he's in the clear. Wait. He's made Wait. enough... No, this is all, everything you just did is bad. Well, at least he, he hasn't stopped he, digging. No, no. One, he's not on the show, which is bad. Two, he's slowing down on his digging, which is also bad. We want this guy to come on, and we want to tell him to dig more. I also found an article about microbes okay, uh, well, for, for, while digging. Yeah, uh, so yeah, everything I said was correct, yeah, just but, because he just transitioned. But, yeah. but first of all, so this guy... He might also be lying to his fiance. He might be like, "Yeah, I'll totally, I'll totally slow down on digging the hole. I'll cut back on it." It sounds like, mm -hmm. yeah, it sounds like something that an addict would say, like, "Okay, I'll, I'll stop doing it, except like on uh, Fridays and weekends, and then like if I have, if I really need to blow off some steam." It sounds like he's. He might still be full fledged, like into the whole lifestyle. Well, the whole lifestyle hasn't stopped. That's why I'm saying cool throne. Okay. I'm just I'm I'm concerned now. Please come on. You can't stop digging the hole until you reach your goal. 
Yes, yes. And then your cool throne? No, that was your cool throne. Yep. Uh, Jake. Uh, my hot seat is uh, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. They are teamed up against a fellow, a pair of fellow recurring guests, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, in the next match. So I think we know who we'll be rooting for in that one, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's June 1st. These now, have gotten progressively less interesting. I'm yeah. actually excited that they don't have golfers in this one because this actually could be fun to watch a bunch of you know quarterbacks who aren't great at golf shit talk and and play golf. You know, like, I like this. I like the zag off of it. It'd be very funny if they had a quarterback. Like I don't know if Josh Allen plays golf, but it'd be very funny if he didn't play golf at all and he just told them that, that he yeah. played. Yeah, and they had two guys like if Aaron Rodgers didn't play golf at all against Josh yeah. Allen that had no idea what to do, and then they were out there golfing like us. That would be fun to watch. Yeah, so that should be interesting June 1st. Uh, and my cool throne is Marshawn Lynch. He is now minority, or minority owner of the Seattle Kraken, along with Macklemore. So good for them. Nice. Yeah, he was also uh, riding a Zamboni. Yeah. That clip was so funny. He was, was doing – he was whipping shitties, as they say in Minnesota, uh, with the Zamboni. It looked very, very fun. Yeah, I'm I'm all on board for more Marshawn Lynch content. Yeah, absolutely. Because like all the um, all these different brands and and networks think that they're gonna have Marshawn Lynch on, and he'll be like the normal charming, exciting Marshawn Lynch, and this time he won't say any cuss words. But it's never gonna happen. Like they're right. gonna put Marshawn Lynch on the microphone before Seattle Kraken games, and he's just gonna go off, and it's gonna be incredible. Before we get to Ginny Bouchard, want to talk to you about our great friends over at Coors Light. We love Coors Light. It's that time of year again. Between weddings, graduations, spring sports, and more, we're busier than ever right now. You know what's a great move at a wedding? Going to the bar, grabbing two, not one, but two ice-cold Coors Lights. That way you don't have to wait in that line again. You head out to the dance floor, you're double-fisting, maybe you see a buddy, you give one to him if you're in a, if you're in a giving mood at the time. But it's Coors Light season. It's officially time for the coldest beer in the world you deserve a beer that's made to chill. The mountains turn blue when your beer is cold. That way, you always know when it's time to chill. Billy had a little party this weekend, had a wheelbarrow, excuse me, two wheelbarrows filled with ice-cold Coors Light. The mountains were blue, had a great time. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's mountain cold refreshment. It's made to chill. It's as crisp and as refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. Perfect for a moment to unwind. I, I invented a cocktail. Jake went out for a drink with me on uh, on Thursday last week. It was a great time where the ice-cold Coors Lights were flowing like water. I invented a drink where I got a blue kind of mind eraser cocktail and then turned the Coors Light upside down in it. It was called The Mountains Are Blue. It's a brand new cocktail. Check it out. Uh, Coors Light is a perfect, refreshing beer for chilling. It's made to chill. Go to CoorsLight.com slash take. You can get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash take. Now, here's Ginny Bouchard. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. Um, it is a first. It is a first. It is the first woman we've ever had on Pardon My Take. So, are you no, serious? No, I'm just kidding. First <laughs> okay. tennis player, though. Actually, first tennis player. We were thinking about it before, and we have not had a tennis player on this show. We talk a lot of tennis, but yeah. we've never actually had a tennis we guest talk on. We talk tons of tennis. So, it's Jeannie Bouchard, tennis uh, pro, superstar, comeback player of the year this next year, <laughs> That's coming the back goal. from injury. Well, I'm so honored. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for ha having me your, as your first tennis player. It's yes. so special. Yeah. So, so, how is the comeback going? How are you feeling? physically it's going really well thank you for asking so i'm rehabbing from my shoulder surgery that i had last june and the goal is to be playing tournaments very soon i'm hoping for the french open in a month okay so and then after that's wimbledon which is like my favorite tournament so i'm, I'm gearing up for that is that your best surface because i know that's a big difference like with tennis pros is like clay versus grass versus hard court I grew up, I'm born and raised in Montreal, so until age 12, I was playing on indoor hard courts, and so that's kind of similar to what grass is. It's uh, pretty fast, and then the clay is obviously slower. I feel like I do well on all surfaces, though. Some I know some players like absolutely hate a certain type of surface, but I like all of them, but I prefer grass, and Wimbledon is just my favorite tournament because of how important it is to tennis. Yeah, and you you fi you were the uh, in the final, so you finished second, what, 2014, right? That's right. So that, I mean... 
I again, I'm not a huge tennis fan, but I feel like I watched the Wimbledon final every year. Was that uh, being there, especially early in your career? That must have been a little like, holy shit, I'm already at this level because that's that's the the tournament. I would assume. Oh, it is. It's like the Masters in yeah. tennis. So it was it was a huge deal for me. I think at the time I almost didn't realize how big it was. On you know when you're in it and you don't like fully realize. So um, I was just so focused on how I was playing, and I think that helped me achieve those good results. But yeah, it was incredibly special. Uh, I was actually named after Princess Eugenie, and she was in the stands watching me play in the final. So it was like one of those full circle life moments so that was pretty crazy that is crazy what 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 do you think you could have done different to win that one? you know i kind of got my butt kicked not gonna lie uh-huh. um i lost to petra kravitova she's very good on the on the grass and she's a, a lefty she's so she's tough to play and um yeah i kind of didn't really even have a chance in that match so i still to this day have not rewatched that match because i'm like still traumatized from it well that's really? funny because we actually have it if we want to pull it up on <laughs> okay. tv let's just watch the finals right <laughs> yeah, now billy breaks it down stroke yeah. by stroke through <laughs> mechanics and that all sounds that. like torture that's yeah. a nightmare for me yeah how much of an adjustment is it when you get into is there like a clay court season like yeah is that a specific time of year that's right it's basically starting right now so before each slam we have the season of whatever surface that is and it's all these preparation tournaments to play uh, to culminate with the grand mm-hmm. slam i've got a really dumb question about about wimbledon and the grass court there do do players ever wear cleats? Are there like specific shoes that you can wear that have like tiny little studs to give you better traction? That's a great question. Thank we you. have, uh, <laughs> he's like, thank you. We have uh, basically regulations, rules on how much we can have these like cleat type of shoes. So we're allowed a little bit of like spikes, but they can't be like too long or too like pointy because then it destroys the court. So like Wimbledon has to approve your shoes before you play, basically. Ah. Okay, so, and then in terms of gear, I feel like tennis fashion has made, like, a resurgence. Like, people like to wear the, like, the New Balance shoes, uh, you know, the te- like the di- old school, like, tennis logo and stuff. Have you felt that, that tennis is getting cooler? I do think so. I, I think because athleisure wear is so yes. prominent these days that you can kind of mix and match like that. I signed with New Balance a year and a half ago, so I, I feel didn't like even know that. Look I, at that. I feel like I jumped on like the cool, trendy train at the perfect moment because they're dad shoes, but they're also so cool now. And then also their clothes is is really cool. They're doing cool collaborations with like fashion brands and yeah. so we get like the best of both worlds it's and awesome like they're super prints, comfortable yeah. too yeah they're like sweatpants for your feet that's why i like wearing new balances they, they are <laughs> and and the the prince brand i see people wearing prints all the time that's the tennis brand it's right? like it's like old school stuff that's yeah, basically cool. coming back in the vintage look i mean i think everyone loves that i personally love wearing all that type of stuff yes. so. yeah if you haven't yes. figured it out already we know absolutely nothing about tennis i was i was going to try to like see how long we could fake it but then once i asked the cleats question i was like that's probably a giveaway i'll, I'll give a i'll give a tennis question when when do you attack the net when you like when, how often because i've always thought like if i were a tennis player i just i just fucking go crazy at the net every time because i feel like every time you attack the net you fuck the other guy up yes and no you want to do it on the right shot so when you get your opponent out in trouble like on the side of the core if you get him moving and you have an easy ball then you want to go to the net if you go to the net on a bad shot you're going to get passed so Especially Got nowadays, it. the rackets are more powerful, and so it's easier for people to hit like big shots, even if they're stretched, even if they're on the run. Mm-hmm. So going into the net on a bad shot is a terrible idea. Don't do that. Have you ever played with an old racket, like the old school rackets, the wooden rackets? I never have until literally a month ago. I found these two wooden rackets in my grandma's closet. My grandma used to play tennis, and I was like, how come you never told me these were here? One of them had a broken string, and then the other one, she said, was strung like 50 years ago. So I was like, I'm going to take these and bring them to my practice tomorrow. And I hit with it. And it was so like soft right. because nowadays we play with so much um, new, like advanced like material. And it was just like the soft wood. And it's like a gut, you know, it's like natural gut string. Right. So it felt like hitting with a trampoline. It That's was a- crazy. <laughs> what about uh, what about like the Hawkeye technology? I'm always impressed with how tennis has incorporated the, uh, the instant replays because they get it exactly right every time. And it's so satisfying to watch the little like shadow of the ball land on the court is there anybody that thinks like hey this technology is bad for tennis like people are like oh i hate var and soccer replay is ruining the game does anybody have that take or most of the players like this is good i'm glad that they've incorporated this i'm sure some of the traditionalists and purists don't think it's good for the game but you know now they've gone a step further they've eliminated all the lines people at tournaments so 
before you had a lines person who would call it, but then you can challenge if you didn't agree with the call. Nowadays, it's basically just the computer calling it. So I think that takes a bit of the fun out of it because there's no like anticipation of whether it's in or out and there's yeah. no like ability to challenge because mm-hmm. you, you're not going to challenge the computer. That oh, so you don't challenge out. anymore. So now there's no more challenges because it's just the computer that calls it, just it out. Said, I, yeah, I agree with you. That The challenge was always fun because it was like, would you, yeah. would you, your coach say like hey challenge or was that just you you would just do it by eye like i felt like that was it well technically you're not supposed to get help from your team Got whether it. to challenge or not but every player secretly looks over and then the coach does like a little signal like yeah. yes Got challenge it. or Take no their don't hat off. Got it. okay Got it. But now it's gone but exactly damn, that's also kind of a bummer because now you don't have somebody to scream at if there's a missed call like it's you know that it's your fault if exactly like happens. we don't have to talk about serena who went up to the lines person and was like screaming at her we're not going to have that mm-hmm. anymore or yeah that's good for djokovic too right yes yeah, well, <laughs> so it'll help choking. a couple of players yeah. Yeah. let me ask you that question it's a very important question uh, who who's the goat on the men's side well tech technically by slam number now it's rafa nadal uh-huh. um but i personally have a soft spot for roger i i think he's great and then but i do think djokovic is actually the best yes okay <laughs> i basically I, just gave you a non-answer i said no, all three no well, you ended no, you no, up there because we, we, yeah. we have to redefine it now what about roger in his prime against djokovic in his prime I'll always pick Roger in his Ugh, prime. Gross. Come oh on. Gosh. Djokovic is the GOAT. No, we actually, like, we, we found uh, for sports that we're not watching all the time, the best way to tap in is to just figure out what the GOAT debate is and then get people riled up. And it seems like tennis has a very spirited one on the men's side. Serena's clearly the GOAT on the women's side, right? Like, that's not even a question. Yes, to me, she is. Yeah, right. So that one's kind of definitive but on the men's side the fact that you have Djokovic who will probably end up with the slams title Rafa and and Federer and they all had like different peaks I just love it I love getting in the goat debate yeah their fan bases are all very um aggressive towards the other fan bases mm-hmm. and so it mm-hmm. gets a very well, well debate. Rafa fan bases are losers because you can only win on clay and Federer <laughs> fan bases just wear their Swiss watches and think they're better than everyone while Djokovic goes out and just pounds no, people. being a being a Roger Federer stand is a luxury brand a lot of times the riffraff can't understand how, how classy it is to cheer for a man like Roger Exactly. Federer. And mm-hmm. by the way, Rafa just won the Australian Open, so... What's that played on? Hard. Did Oh, yeah, Djokovic didn't play because they banned him. Mickey so Mouse. That's yeah. Mickey Mouse. It was a bubble. Yeah, Australia was a bubble. Won that. Good, thank you for proving my point for me. Was Federer in that tournament? No. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, well, so Rafa won a tournament he's old without, as shit. Yeah, without Djokovic or Federer there. Hmm. Hmm. That Thank is you, true. Janie. Okay, there are other good players. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, all right. So we, I, we had a question about um, one of your former boyfriends. Not the breakup and all that stuff, but Mason Rudolph. We're football guys. Mm-hmm. Did the Miles Garrett thing happen while you guys were dating? No, that oh. was before. Did you talk to him about it at all? Yes. What did he say? Was he like, I almost died? <laughs> <laughs> he almost died. <laughs> From your perspective, was it was it assault? Yeah. The, wow, you guys are coming with the hard hitting question. That questions. is hard. Yeah. You thought we were going to ask something else. Like, we just want more intel on that incident. That's all we care about. <laughs> I mean, I think they both got fined, right? Yeah. So I think that Suspended tells you. Suspended Miles Garrett, yeah. Yeah, even mm-hmm. more. So, yeah. you know, I think there's a bit of blame on both sides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was he like, he, ne- he never was like, damn, that was crazy. I mean, I think the whole world was kind of like, damn, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah. But like, just randomly, you guys be out to dinner. He's like, remember that time? Miles Garrett almost fucking domed me. No, he would not bring it up like that. <laughs> no. no. All right. That's how our brains work. Yeah. That you, like, something like that happens, that's all you talk about for the rest of your life. No, I think that's something you'd want to move past, yeah, though. Probably. Because you're, you're right. just labeled. You're right. and if it you're happens just... to you, yeah. then you want to move on from it. But us, we're dumb. Right. We yeah. see something on that rectangle that has lights that come out, the television, <laughs> and that just gets sears into our brain for the rest of our lives. And that's yes. all we remember. <laughs> yes, but when it's you, you're like, I don't want to be known just for the one thing. Yes. You know? So you want to move past it. You also had uh, a very funny Twitter story that's actually becoming a movie now. So if I have it right, uh, before the Patriots Falcons Super Bowl. Uh, a fan on Twitter basically was like, if the Patriots win, you got to take me out on a date. And then obviously the famous comeback happens. And then you took, you, you're you a woman of your word. You took him out on a date. You guys hung out a little bit after too, right? Yes. And then it's now a movie? Yes. That's kind of crazy. You know everything about this story. I, I mean, love that's, it. Well, we, I, I, I was looking it up. Uh, Nate in our office, he, he chronicled it uh, extensively. He was on top of it. He was on, I think that was his entire beat for a while was the Jeannie Bouchard <laughs> Twitter date. Twitter fan date yes. saga. Yes. 
you know, it was one of those crazy stories because it was just the timing of it all. You know, the timing of my tweet when it was the worst score ever. And then I was betting against Tom Brady and he was like, I'll take you on a date if Brady comes back. And I was like, sure, because I thought that would never happen. And lo and behold, we have the greatest mm -hmm. comeback in Super Bowl history. So just the timing of it all was outrageous. And the next day, like people were stopping me on the street like, hey, are you that Twitter girl? And not like a tennis player. <laughs> right. but like, No, you're that girl that I saw something on Twitter about. So John was just a very sweet guy. We actually uh, went to a Brooklyn Nets game. We sat courtside and they, they showed us on the screen and everything it was so cute. And yeah, we stayed in touch ever since. We were like good friends. And um, now F Fox 2000 bought like the rights to the story. Right. And then it got bought by Disney. So uh, we're in the process of trying to attach an actress to my role and then um, selling it to probably one of the streaming platforms. Okay, so I want to ask about what actress you want to play you, but I have to <laughs> just real quick. Do you know how close you were to like having to go on a date with just a complete like loser weirdo like twitter is we live on twitter like so it, i could have been one of you guys you are, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh well that yeah. hurts but that's okay no that would have been no yeah, that's trust fine. me no, like you right. she's right uh, yeah no she's but, right but, but like was you, were you holding your breath like oh god this guy could be like there are some some trolls on twitter and if he shows up and he's just like oh man that was a mistake were you holding your breath Oh, I was completely terrified <laughs> because his profile picture on Twitter was a picture of Tiger Woods. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, better no, than like a, no. a big fish or something. No, that no, been bad. a tiger picture? The tiger picture definitely so sets like, a tone. This is obviously not Tiger Woods, yeah. so that means he's a super fan, and we all know how super fans can be. And so I was... I of had, Tiger Woods. <laughs> well, yeah. So I had no idea what to expect. Literally, my bodyguard started doing like a background check, and we finally mm -hmm. got like a picture, and like I got a picture of his driver's license, and I was like, okay, he's just like a little college boy. Yeah, he's he a got, normal dude. He's a totally normal dude. And people, like, he's good looking. Yeah. People looked at us and thought we would be such a cute couple, and so I was like, I think that's why people love the story so much as well, because it looked like it could really happen, and who knows, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. We don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Did you have any, like, security measures in place, like, uh, was somebody going to call you after the first quarter to just check in and be like, are you okay? Was there a signal? Oh, yeah. My bodyguard was like standing right over there. Like, All right. Smart. But also it was in a very public place. So I felt safe. Yes. You know, this guy was going to pull anything mm -hmm. uh, in this the middle is, of a basketball game. This might be the most shocking story of all time that you like took up a guy on Twitter and he wasn't a crazy. I know. It's just amazing how it turned out. <laughs> he, mm -hmm. I looked at the picture. I was like. That guy looks completely normal. <laughs> huh? One in a billion. We could actually date. Yes, like I will yes. actually consider this guy. Yeah. Sorry. So who do you want to play you in the movie? I dream. Dream. You get any actress in the world. I love Blake Lively. Okay. Maybe Margot Robbie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Those are good she's choices. Good. Yeah. 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 Or I always get. I look like that girl from Gone Girl. People tell me Rosamund Pike. Yeah, yep. I can see that. Yep, but um, the, isn't that a fun game to play? Like everyone always plays that game. Like, who would you want to play you in a movie? I know this is like real life. No, yes. Yeah, it's pinch me. Happen this to is right. so cool. Yes. Yeah, you get no. to pick anyone. No, it's really cool. I'm executive producer, and I want a little cameo in it as well. And I'm like, I want to be the crazy like ex girlfriend in this guy's past that like comes back to like yes. scream at him that he's trying to date someone famous or something. I feel like I could be a great psycho that's, ex girlfriend. That's kind of a psycho move to like want to play a girl <laughs> who's mad at a guy. For wanting to date you, yeah, I want to live out like my psycho <laughs> girlfriend moment. Yeah. I really wish that's such a funny story. I, w I really wish you had like gone on a date with like one of those guys that replies to every tweet. Like LaFraud James has ha has never won a real title, and he's got it typed <laughs> uh -huh. out, and he just replies to everyone all the time. He just like copy paste yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know the people mm -hmm. or a crypto guy or someone. Do you know who's gonna play the guy? No, so we're we're just trying to attach actors to this right now, and um, they've thrown around names like. Uh, Gosh, who who are they? Um, Denzel Washington. No, but okay. Will Smith. I just think I mean, if if you're in a couple, he's a little on the older side. Will yeah, Smith. Sure. Um, he's I available think, right now. He's yeah. He's, yeah. he's got nothing going on yeah. right now. Going huh? on. He's been in a tennis movie before. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, he's got. He won an Oscar for it. It, it, it was actually, really good. That would be a cool like melding of worlds. That uh, what's Richard King Richard King yeah. Richard yeah. Richard, yeah, Williams. Richard Williams. He so it basically is like a, a sequel. It becomes Richard almost Williams like then dates, <laughs> and then you go and beat Serena, and he's like, "Well, my wife and then my daughter are playing in Wimbledon well, final." It's like a cinematic universe, yeah. Thing where he he dates you, you eventually get married, you have kids that then grow up to be probably the best tennis player of all time, yep. right? Yeah, because it's like half your genes, half yep. the Williams family genes, and then your son or daughter becomes the goat. Yes. 
I, I'm going to go call Richard right now. This sounds this like yeah. a great yes, life yes, plan for yes, me. That's it, perfect. It was interesting because I was, I was watching King Richard the other day and um, just thinking about like what you have to do as a child to put in work to become an elite tennis player. It's It seems like so much work. It, it seems exhausting for like not just the player, for the entire family. So like from, from what age did you really realize, I want to focus on this and I want to be great at tennis? You have to start really young. I started at four and a half years old. Wow. I've played my first tournament when I was eight. And I think I would say when I was probably nine, which I know is really young to decide your career in life, is when I... I qualified for a big 12 and under tournament in France. So I got to travel internationally and I was like, wow, I could travel and play tennis and this can be my career. Like I'm doing this. And so pretty soon you have to specialize. I played other sports as a kid, like soccer, basketball, by, but by age 10 to 12, you're like, you know, leaving school early for practice and, and missing mo uh, weeks and months of school at a time to go play tournaments around the world. Tennis is very international. So um, you sacrifice a lot. I missed birthday parties. I missed family events. I missed mm -hmm. socializing. Right. So. Was there ever a moment where you're like, I'm I, this is not for me? Like the, that moment that happens in every movie where it's like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. For sure. Everyone had those moments when you lose a tough match. You're like, is this really worth it? Uh, and you feel bad about yourself. But for me, it was very soon to bounce back. Like the next day, I'm like, OK, like I'd feel weird not going to practice now. And I do still want to play tennis. And what's great with tennis is you have a tournament the next week. Right. So you always have the ability to go play again next week. And, you know, I'm not playing a team sport I'm not owned by a team where they tell me what to do I can decide my schedule I can decide when I play so it's like hey I want to go play extra tournaments I can go do it what's what's the I, I like to ask this of uh, athletes whenever we have an athlete on like what's the one thing about tennis that the normal fan doesn't understand like whether it be something difficult that they can't really comp they, they think we're, we're the quintessential guys who sit on a couch and we're like oh we could do that we can't but, you know, a lot of fans are like, oh, I could do that. What's the thing that fans completely overestimate in terms of skill or the game or thinking the game? You know, I find fans in New York specifically are like that because when I play at the U.S. Open and I go to the back of the court to get a ball, they're screaming at me like, hey, serve to her backhand like her backhand sucks. <laughs> That's in New great. York specifically, they just love to be coaches. And I'm yeah. like, how about you come try doing it? Yes. You, know? yes. like you, you think it's so easy. Right. Um, so I, I feel that aspect. I think the biggest thing is the amount of hours that go into it. Mm -hmm. And I think tennis, honestly, I think we practice more than other sports. Like I have friends in every other sport and like we are on the court three to four hours a day. And it's like other sports are, they do an hour of really on field or on court and then other stuff like gym of course and all that stuff working out but tennis is just the repetition you really need good timing and so it's just the hours that go in and it's a full-time job I mean I'm practicing three four hours on the tennis court two hours in the gym two hour massage or physical therapy eating is part of my job sleeping mm -hmm. and then that's my day how, how much time does it take for you to like lose your peak ability like is it a week is it because that's always amazing to me when we talk to athletes or like a hockey player is like, oh, if I don't, if I'm not on the ice for two weeks, like I'm not, I'm like 80 percent. Oh yeah, I mean, probably if I don't hit for one week, I'll go out in the court and feel a little bit out of it. Really, tennis is very much of the timing aspect to it, and you just got to get in a groove, and so that's why we practice so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of like Big Cat talking about fans having irrational confidence and being able to coach you up on things, I had a thought <laughs> before you came in that I wanted to get your feedback on. If if you took everybody in this room, so me, Big Cat, Jake. Bubba, Billy, and memes back there. If you had us all on the court against you at once, so it's like one against, what is that, six? Do you, could we take a game off you ever? Oh, no. You sure? No chance, because she could just, like, I don't think we could hit it back if she hit it as hard as she wanted to. But like Big Cat said, we would just, we would just charge the fucking net. We put the pressure <laughs> on you. Yeah, I guess that part. So we'd probably put four, four people at the net. So you'd have to figure out, would you just hit it at us, directly at us, and try to injure us? Probably, at that point. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, yeah, your your reflex wouldn't be fast enough to be able to handle that, so I would just try to nail you guys. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, I, I I was lucky enough, I think it was like seven years ago, we got to uh, go hit with Andy Roddick, and I couldn't even like get the rack it up in time. Yeah, so more of you <laughs> wouldn't really help in yeah. that situation. probably be worse, yeah. actually. Would, that's what I was going to say. You're going to get in each other's way. It wouldn't even, right. it would not be helpful. We wouldn't communicate well. Yeah, who would you, <laughs> so if, if it was like me, Big Cat, Jake, and Billy at the net, like just getting ready to return the volley, who are you going to try to hit first? 
well, I think I'll go with you because you seem to have Bonk. superior confidence. <laughs> yeah. And so that's a red flag to me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Go right at him. Yeah. Because um, he thinks he can do it. I think that means he really can't. I know. Yeah. You're absolutely 100% right. <laughs> like, you could not have read me more. It, the, the more I say that I believe that I can do something, it's usually because deep down I know that I can't. Yes. Yeah. And you have sunglasses on inside. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, the difference yeah, only is he's, blind people and assholes, he, he, right? He, <laughs> he's 27, so he's still got that, like, irrational confidence. I'm uh-huh. 37, so I'm, I've am i now reached the point in my life where I'm like, no, I would suck at everything. Yeah. You have that life experience yeah. and uh-huh. that maturity, right, exactly. to, know, maturity. to know your limits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So when you're like I've always heard this about tennis um you're thinking like two or three shots ahead while you're playing is that true pretty much yeah I wouldn't say two or three maybe I mean one or two for sure you're trying to hit somewhere get them off the court like I like to try hit an angle and then I'm already thinking about you know moving them back to the other side or doing a drop shot after that it's a little bit people call it like chess a little bit in the sense of you want to you want to set up the point so you're thinking about where you want to serve and your next shot after for sure multiple shots do you ever think about what they're trying to do to you and then you just do the opposite like is it and then they know that you're thinking about what they're doing so they're going to do the opposite on that you could really get yourself twisted. <laughs> that was a up. convoluted question. No, you could really. I, you see what I'm saying, though. If you know what I'm doing, and I know that you know, I'm going to do something else. Now, do you know that I'm going to do something else, even though you already knew what I was doing in the I first mean, I have place? To take a guess if you're going to be doing reverse psychology on me or not. But what if I'm reversing the reverse? <laughs> see, this is how you think yourself into. Like, if you're a football coach, this is how you end up running a draw on third down yeah. and twelve. This is me just standing on the tennis court, like my my controller's unplugged, being like, okay, and not moving at all. Right. Th- then you're like analysis paralysis, yeah. and you're uh-huh. just frozen. So no, that's not helpful to think that way. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. I'm closer to being a, a little, pro. Let's, let's simplify. You know, <laughs> simplifying it. Um, you know, thinking one thought at a time. What I would do though is you do need some humility to think about what they would do to you because you got to admit what are my weaknesses? What right. are people going to try to attack? Mm-hmm. So you got to think about that and then find ways to counter it. What, you, what are your weaknesses? I'm not telling you. I don't have any. That's Ooh. smart. That's smart. You almost had her. Mm. It's a good question though. Your, uh, your serve's not great, isn't it? <laughs> no, my serve's good. Mm. Yeah. To Wait, both I ways? To, I, both sides? <laughs> to both sides? I don't think you charge the net enough, right? You're a ground stroke player. I am more of a baseline player and I do want to go to the net more. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, again, you want to pick the right shot. So, but it's helpful to, to practice it and practice like we call it approaching to the net. And so mm-hmm. you want to do that. So I need to practice well, I, that more. I would see you falling into that trap of just trying to ground stroke us to death and I would just mm-hmm. hit a drop shot. Yep. Checkmate. Okay. All day drop shots. Wow, you like know me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah, I'm what, scouted. What about, uh, have you ever whiffed on a, on a slam? That would be so embarrassing. Like an easy one and you're just, you just no. whiff. I do that all the time. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Um, you get so hyped up, you're like, holy shit, I'm going to crush this ball. Do you ever hit one in the net? Well, of course. That's embarrassing. Yeah, but see, you're already trying to think of winning the point when in tennis it's cliche, but you have to think one shot at a time. Yeah. Keep you your can't get ahead ball. of yourself, can't get emotional during the point. You got to stay focused. Yeah. I've always wondered, a lot of times when you when you go to the ball person, you get the balls that you're about to serve. They like they bounce a couple of them, check a few, and then they just like throw one away. They're like, not this one. What ha- what's that ball's deal? Because mm-hmm. it has bad vibes. Yeah. yeah, you can't play with a ball that has bad vibes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's kind of what I figured. I because there's they're all the same. They're you know new balls that are used in championship level tennis. I would imagine there's some sort of quality control aspect where yes, they're all they're all good balls. But you see one, you're just like, nope, not not today. To be fair, there can be a difference if you've randomly used one particular ball more than the others in this current set of balls. Then it's um it has less like fuzz on it, and that yeah. means it goes faster mm-hmm. through the air. So people will try to pick that ball for their serve. Ah. So it goes just that little bit amount faster. Little mm-hmm. tiny fuzz. What about the um? Remember when Djokovic hit the? Was it a ball woman? Yes. In the yeah. throat? The li- lines person. Lines, lines person? Yeah. So you, you thought she shouldn't have been standing there, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, she shouldn't have been standing there. It's, it was her job to stand no, there. No, no. She shouldn't have been standing no, there. No, that's why they're that getting rid of him. That wasn't his fault. They're trying to protect him. Yeah, they're, they're trying to protect Djokovic. That was, no, that was wrong. He should not have done that. For so. her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one was a tough one to spin zone as a Djokovic fan. I was just like, well... 
See, this is the problem with How fans. They're like one? blind. <laughs> they have just, this blind uh, love for their person, yeah, and they big just bad can't. Luck. Big cats. Like, if he if he wasn't doing this job right now, he would be a guy at home with a Twitter avatar of Djokovic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he still has that. Yeah, yes. yeah this is burner yes. account. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, my my favorite. Part I actually about probably have only watched one match of him ever. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the blind love for Djokovic? Again, it's then? just being part of the goat debate is very fun. It's just getting in the mix, and it's also the one that makes the most people the most angry. Correct. So. Correct. Yeah, because he has a love hate with fan some fans like some people totally hate him so he's the perfect guy to, yeah, they to hate get because hate. he's got a mind of his own he speaks what he thinks exactly mm -hmm. good for him <laughs> my favorite part about playing tennis and i don't really play that much uh like ever really <laughs> but i always love the smell of the new balls yeah when you, when you crack the top does that does that joy ever go away it never goes away yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. it's and like the sound that it makes too the sound yes and at wimbledon because the courts are grass it's like a softer sound when it bounces and it's just like it's the most like beautiful noise in the world wait how many hits of the ball until the ball is like can't be used anymore um literally one point no, no. Oh, okay. We use the same balls for like seven games, and then they oh. change them out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because then, but those balls, if you like grab that ball after, it's dead? Not completely dead, but it's just not to our professional player standards. You guys could play with those balls, but we oh, can't. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. What do you mean, like throw to our dogs? <laughs> yeah, that would be perfect. No, for the one time every three years you go on a court, you yeah. use it. Have you ever been in a warm-up? I love the warm-up, because you got to be nice. Have you ever like played a warm-up with anyone, and they were just like being a dick? Oh, yeah, Sharapova. Really? Yeah. What'd she do? She just, like, tries to hit the ball as hard as she can in the warm-up. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's so That's annoying. That's kind of mental she's edge, though. Trying to set a tone. Yeah. She's, she's trying to intimidate you, but it didn't work on me. So what did... Are you, can you, like, complain to anyone about that? Can you be like, hey, stop? No, the umpire can't force you to do anything. Ultimately, the ump umpire can't force the person to warm up. Like, you could just ah. walk on the court and decide not to warm up if you don't want to. But normally, most of us just do some easy rallying to, to feel good. Yeah. And some try to do winners and try to hit as hard as they can. So. I, yeah, That's there's nice. nothing that you just roll your eyes. It's like, oh, God, here goes Maria again. Yeah, <laughs> she's just winners. This is what, yeah. Jesus. Would you say that, like, I mean, I, I detected a note of, like, this is my rival when, when you brought up Sharapova. Would you, is it fair to say that you and her have bad blood? Uh, definitely, but she's retired now, so... You put her in retirement. You outlasted her, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Congratulations. She doesn't want that smoke. I did that to Coach K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, no, so no, unfortunately we can't play anymore. I mean, she's a great competitor, and it, we had battles for sure, but uh, no, we can't play anymore. She's retired. What about... Um, I've always wondered for strategy on a second serve. So you hit the first serve in the net, or it, it's out. And then you take a little something off the second serve. What if you just don't take anything off? Obviously, you have a better chance of giving up the point, but you'd kind of fuck up the opponent, right? Totally. I sometimes think that's a great strategy because they step in expecting an easier ball, and then you just go with another first Blasted, serve, and then yeah. they're surprised. But it's way higher risk, so you got to weigh the pros and the cons. It's mm -hmm. all about risk-reward. I think I'm finding quickly that I would just probably not get a single serve in and then I would go to the net right away and lose every point. Yeah, I'm getting a very kind of aggressive mentality yeah, uh -huh. here. So well, it's like only can, first serves, rush the net. I don't I know how far that'll take you. Can I tell you the truth? We're like it, Sampras. Yeah. yeah, I have played tennis before a few times, and it's just very boring to me. So I'm like, I'll hit it a couple times, and I'll just try to hit a home run out of the out of the whole thing. Yeah, Fence. that defeats the whole purpose of yeah, playing right. tennis. Yeah, right. I admit that like it's stupid, but I just can't. There's something about having a tennis racket and like seeing the ball. I just like, I want to hit a dinger. So, so you should maybe play baseball. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, if, if maybe tennis was like more of like a mound and a wall <laughs> that you had to hit over, I would be more into it. And the racket was smaller and made out of wood. <laughs> yeah. And okay, no cool. strings on it. So basically you hate tennis. No, I don't hate tennis. <laughs> I love Djokovic. Yeah, I, I, I love to. I love. Well, my favorite parts of tennis are the, the sound and the smell of the new balls. Um, the massages that you were talking about as part of the training. The goat and, debate. The goat debate. And then the giant tennis balls that they give you. That you sign. Oh, that the fans I, use. Yeah. I love the giant tennis balls. Those things are the best. They're so cute. I love signing them. It's so much easier to sign the big ball than when they give you the actual balls because it's like a disaster. But and also the fans. Like, has there ever been a fan that like screwed you up? Because I know you're not supposed to yell during the point, right? During the point, you're not supposed to. Yeah, it, it happens sometimes, especially if a ball is close to being out. Sometimes fans will call it out, and then the player will stop because they think the umpire called it out, and then you have to replay the point, and it's a whole situation. But I wish the fans. I, I wish it was more. More like involved because yeah. it's a 
quite quiet sometimes yeah. and stiff. And I feel like tennis needs to get with the times and be a little more fun. So I'm totally for fans. I always tell my fans, I'm like, scream as loud as you can. I think it's so fun. What are, Your fans are called Genie's Army? Yeah, they've labeled themselves the Genie Army. Uh, um, we're in. We're in. <laughs> are you part of the crew now? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What, why aren't they the Boo Crew? That, yeah. sound, that sounds weird. I think it sounds great. Or Bhutan Clan. Taking no <laughs> ideas from you. No. Genie's Army, I'm part of it. But you gotta like tattoo my name somewhere on your body. Uh oh, okay, we go right next to my Djokovic tattoo. <laughs> you know what you should do? The, the tennis, well not you, like tennis as a governing body should kind of take a page out of golf's handbook where just have a tournament in Scottsdale, Arizona once a year mm -hmm. where the fans can get as drunk as they want. They can scream during points. Just like free for all. Just absolute chaos i think that'd be fun to do like one time i totally agree and as long as the players can just get used to it i think it'd be way more fun for people to be more engaged and, and more into it i mean the fans are great in tennis but there's just they're a little restricted mm -hmm. right. so i just want to loosen that up and make it more of a party scene like when you go to a basketball game i went two nights ago and it was like a club like you're sitting the music is so loud and it's it's fun yeah, yeah. i like that uh, we've been pretty nice in this interview but i do have i've got one major issue that I think you're a complete and total psycho about. Oh. And it's an old tweet that you had. Uh oh. You said, I'm gonna quote this, dipping pizza in soy sauce <laughs> is oh. life. Oh no. Ca all caps on life. Oh no. Dipping Genie. pizza in soy sauce is life. That's that's a serial killer move. Oh no. Ugh. You know you what? You, I, I'm not helping you Pizza, on this one. I got so much hate for that. I had no idea Rightfully that there was so. going to be this huge backlash. I mean, people got mad at me. But then soy sauce companies were like reaching out and like, hey, you want some free soy sauce? I was like, uh, yes. But uh, it just adds some saltiness to it. I, th I thought it was a great idea. Um, yeah, no, that's it's, gross. That's too much salt. That's gross. I can't believe people feel so passionately about it's not, this. It's, it's not passion. It's more like what's your problem <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah i feel bad for you yeah actually. i just happened to be having susha and pizza at the same time one night and i just dipped Did it, it in. together and now it's life <laughs> yeah and now people know i'm a serial killer all right secretly. so if we're doing the mean question portion i'll do my one mean question i'm so ready you're a twin yes how much does your twin suck at tennis oh my gosh <laughs> i mean right that's a real question though right like What's her problem? Look, she started when I started at age four or five, okay. and she retired at age six. Right. Okay. So, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is she ever like, I should have kept with that? Uh, sometimes, but, you know, she we're so different. She's like a social butterfly. She She's great at other things. Uh, definitely was not into sports like I was. I was more the tomboy kind of Got it. obsessed with sports. Um, so, interesting how twins can be so different. Yeah, huh? it's just always fascinating when twins, when one's like a professional athlete and the other's not. I it's would, like, if I if I had a twin and he was a professional athlete, I'd be like, I fucked that up. <laughs> like I got everything you got. Well, maybe maybe you got some different genes. Who knows? Isn't it the same? I think is it identical twins? Yeah. No, we're fraternal. Oh, okay. All you right. Probably, so then there it is. Yeah, yeah. All right. You just you just beat her into submission. Yeah. You share a poviter. Uh -huh. You made her bow oh out. God. Yeah. You no. dominated her in your mom's in, uh, in the womb. Belly. Yeah, no. in the womb. Just bullied her. Just. Took no strokes <laughs> off in the warm-ups. You were like, it's on once we yeah. get out of here. Yes. yes. Um, I'd prefer not to think of it that way, but, you know, <laughs> no, I just, uh, we're just so different people. We're basically, yeah, it's like siblings that just happen to be born at the same time. Got it, so. got it. Um, I, I, I just want to play just real briefly, real quick game of matchmaker. You might not be into this at all, but I want to throw it out there because... Um, you have gone on a date with a fan before, yes. and there's a, a person who works here at Barstool that is a massive fan of yours. In fact, when you first started dating Mason Rudolph, um, this person wrote a blog. His name's Hubs. He said, devastating news, as Jeannie Bouchard is reportedly off the market. And then he just oh, led, wow. the, he led the blog off with, no, and 17 O's, and then nine exclamation points after. He was... He was devastated. That sounds like someone who's really devastated. Very devastated. Um, would you be willing to meet him at any point? Are you, are you completely... You had one good date with a fan, so you're like, you know what? I'm not going to try it again. Well, first of all, with John, it was multiple dates. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Good job, John. And you know what? I am very single and very ready to mingle. Okay. So, yes, let's meet Hubs. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think Hubs might have a girlfriend. But we'll Not just, for long. We'll pretend. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's a massive Roger that. Federer fan, too. It. You guys have a lot yeah, in common. Yeah, he is a huge, obnoxiously so, Federer fan. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Like, he thinks he has the class that Roger Federer has. That's great. I'd love, I would love a classy guy. He does guy. not. 
He he's, does not. He's not a classic. He's a Yankee guy. fan. <laughs> Although he does, he has earned his pinstripes. Um, this has been awesome. I, I had one last question. It's the rowback question. Promo code take. Uh, you get twenty percent off your rowback purchase with promo code take r h o b a c k dot com. We actually have some rowback gear for you and your mom if you want. No Thank pressure. Um, I'm actually going to give my rowback question to Jake, who's sitting next to you, who actually is a huge, huge tennis fan. So he tries to get us to talk about tennis, and we just basically are like, shut up, dude. Uh, so now he can talk about tennis. Yes. Hello, Jeannie. Hi. Uh, three-time junior club champion here in Florida. <laughs> oh, oh, let's so go, I've got a little, what some, club? little more on my resume. Oh, what yeah. club? Weston Hills in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay. Ask him what happened no the last deal. time we played, if you had to retire due to I injury. I hit a slam winner at the net, and I sprained my ankle. Yeah, but, but I still won the point. Retired due to injury. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty yeah. epic. Score, yeah. Scorecard yeah. says retired, could not finish. <laughs> yeah, fair. He's also sick at ping pong. That does not translate at all to tennis. Well, so. he's also sick of tennis. Okay. So maybe it does. I yeah. respect it. Maybe yeah. a little bit. Um, so we were talking about the GOAT earlier, right? You've played Serena Williams a handful of times in your career, and you beat her once. Yes. When you see her on the other side of the net, people say it's cliche, oh, it's just another match. There's no way people actually think that. Is that what you thought when you played her? Because you have to imagine it's just, oh, my God. Holy crap. That's Serena. Great question. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, for sure, the first time, especially when I played her, I looked across the net and I felt like I was looking at my TV screen because mm -hmm. I'm so used to seeing her on TV. And I was like, wow, I, I mean, it's an amazing feeling to be able to get to that place and achieve that to be able to play against her. And so it's just kind of um, one of those like out of the, your body experiences because you're just so used to seeing her on TV and now she's actually in front of you waiting for you to serve. And it's like, I'm, I, w I wasn't even thinking about winning at that point. I was like, I just want to do a good enough serve that like she's okay to return. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. She beat her 6-2-6-1. Whoa. Did she give up a little bit? No. Because that happens in tennis. I Doesn't it? Like We're, I've, we're emotional. <laughs> but in, in certain, is there not a strategy? Like I'll see, and again, I'm very, very not, not, a lot of knowledge about tennis but i've heard people say that like in a certain uh s no game set set uh, well the whole thing would be a this match match <laughs> set <laughs> if like someone goes down they'll just be like all right i'm punting on this maybe it's more in men's game men's oh, because so you it's mean five games in the yeah, so five, in one yeah. set that yes. they would try to um i think that can be a strategy they yeah. want to save their energy and almost just start over in the next set right mm -hmm. i would i never do that though i don't think that's right that's what i say whenever djokovic loses a set that that's what he did yeah okay you're one of those like real diehard yeah fans. i seriously have watched him one time it was against uh uh it was, the 2019, it was the 2019 wimbledon final against federer i'm pretty sure and who won i think joker <laughs> fuck yeah that was an epic match right? oh yeah, yeah that was the crazy yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. i watched yes you have any other questions jake that was a great um, question well you know the first time i ever played serena though i do remember calling my mom before and just saying like i'm so scared i'm about to lose six love six love and then i went out there and i won the first set and then I lost. That was another match. What was the handshake like? Oh, Ooh, good great. She's gracious. Yeah. yeah. But handshakes are a big thing in tennis. Are they? Oh, yeah. Has there been bad what ones? Was, what was Sharapova's oh, yes. handshake like? Um, Probably just grabbed the hell out of your hand, tried to <laughs> yeah. break it because she was so mad that you beat her again. It was kind of, yeah, very icy, silent from both ends. Stare. Dead uh -huh. fish? Yeah. Have you gotten a dead fish? Yeah. Sometimes some girls are just almost like barely tap your hand and then just walk away. Uh. Any Juwan Howards? Anyone try to get physical? Smush your face? No. Okay. No, tennis is a classy sport. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's some, you can tell the personalities and the emotions by how the handshake goes at the end. So I, always keep I your eyes that. open for that. I love, I mean, do you, are you happy that there is the handshake? Because my take is it does seem antiquated at times, especially in professional sports. Like, why are they shaking hands? But I love watching that interaction after a game. Oh, I love it, too. I think it's great for the fans. And I think it's right to just, you know, have some sort of acknowledgement before you leave the court after battling it out. So oftentimes they're great. I love when you see like two after an epic match and the two guys hug and you're just like, yeah, they respect each other. So, yeah. All right. Go ahead. I oh, have one I, last last question. My, my last question, because I did just watch King Richard. Have you ever done the thing that Sanchez Vicario did and just pretend that you have to go to the bathroom just to stall somebody for a while? No, but yeah. players do it all the time. Oh. I won't admit to it, though. Yeah, Got the way you it. answered that it sounded like a maybe. <laughs> maybe. It, it's a maybe. Yeah. You'll never know. No, I mean, honestly, sometimes it's just for, like, to take time for myself to, like, take a couple minutes to go to the bathroom. Um, but there are players who pretend they're injured to take time away, and they mm -hmm. play all these kinds of games. I try to not do that. But. Yeah. All right, so my last, last question. This has been great. We've uh, As far, far as, like, first tennis guests, couldn't gone better. 
Now really you guys have enjoyed, so much more information on tennis. I know. Really so. enjoyed having you because we Thank like you. to ask dumb questions because we're dumb guys when it comes to sports <laughs> we don't watch um, and sports we watch. Let's just say you win Wimbledon. Are you a full collapse or go to your knees kind of celebrator? Oh, full collapse. Full collapse. Yeah, because that's just a life-changing moment. So back or forward? Back. back. Okay. <laughs> Gotta go back. All right. All right. Because that's like, that's a huge decision. You have to think about that ahead of time. Yeah, you do. Like the, I, I kind of think I'd be the knees, like the, uh, that guy. Yeah, you do seem like that. Yeah, type. like, mm-hmm. oh, are you not entertained? <laughs> um, but I, I listen, going all the way, you know, doing the snow angels, a pretty classy move too. Yeah, I would do that and just be like, what is happening? I did what it. is life? Yeah, exactly. I would. I would absolutely go to the back in, uh, in France at Roland Garros yeah. because you get the clay yes. on your shirt. Like Rafa, your, and your favorite. Yes, yes. No, Rafa's not my favorite. <laughs> and now this is great because if you do win Wimbledon, we are part of Genie, Genie's army, so we're rooting for you. Uh, you. You will collapse, full collapse, and then you'll be thinking in the back of your head, remember when those two weird dudes sitting next to a bench press asked me what I would do if I won Wimbledon? So we will actually be the first thought in your head if you win Wimbledon. Yes, and I'll like thank you guys for helping me plan my yes. celebratory reaction Mental coaches. Maybe do a yeah. barrel roll. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> You go down and then you just start rolling around the court back and forth. Yeah, and I'll be uh, I'll be thanking you guys in my speech as well. So. Okay, I like that. the French part or the English part? The English part. Okay. Well, it's Wimbledon. Good. She's winning Wimbledon. Yeah, but you speak French too, right? Yeah, yes. I, I always assume that if you speak French, you have to address the crowd in French. If I'm in France, for sure. Yeah, I'm not in England. I would stick with English. I would want the, the Queen to understand. Yeah, yes. so. yes. there you go. Yes. So I also think this is actually what some uh, college football coaches do. You get on the grass, you take a little bit. You like oh, pinch yeah. off like two, three blades. You eat it. Djokovic does that. You be- yes, you Djokovic does part do that. Of the court that. At that he's point. a football guy. Yeah. I mean, it's grass. It's healthy. So yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> sure. Maybe a little soy sauce. Maybe have a little soy sauce packet in your sock. I'm telling you, try it. <laughs> I, no, I, I'm not. I'm never going to try it. And I like Skyline Chili. So I'm not a guy that's afraid to try gross shit. Yeah. Soy sauce on pizza, bridge too far. What? I, I just didn't realize I, I hit a nerve with that tweet. Yeah, well, well we, we'll stop. We're going to try tennis again. We're going to try watching tennis again. Let's okay. we'll yeah, do that Yeah, well, first. I mean, I would expect you would watch me after We're this in. interview. When's your next match? Well, hopefully French Open. So, and then Done. After, after that, Wimbledon. So. Done. So is, <laughs> is your arm, would you say it's like 90%, 95%? Yeah, probably around there. I just need a little bit more time to do more rehab, very boring, fun exercises to get stronger, and yeah. a little more time on the court to be ready to play. We're in. I, I actually, the more I talk about it, I, I do have another question. So when you're measuring... I, I'm here all day, guys. Because <laughs> I'm always curious about the serves. They always have the, uh, they have the miles per hour, kilometers per hour, the radar gun set up for the serves. How closely do you pay attention to that and... Like, do you adjust how hard you're hitting the ball if you're like, oh, that's three miles per hour less than what I know I can do? I actually look at it a lot. I probably look at it too much. My coach would probably tell me, don't, like, look after every single serve. I look after every single serve. I just have to know. I love numbers, so I'm just like, I need to know exactly how much that was. And sometimes when you're in different conditions, it can I can feel like I hit it harder, but it actually came out slower because the air is, like, thicker. We're in a mm-hmm. humid area, like in Miami or something. And then you go to Indian Wells and Palm Springs, and it's the ball actually goes faster through the air. So, um yeah, I would totally – and I would just try hit, you know, as hard as I could every time. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, all right, we're Genie's Army. We're excited for your comeback. This has been a lot of fun. We appreciate it. Thank um, you. I had so much fun Yeah, as well. sorry for some of the dumb questions. They were mostly not dumb. There were some dumb ones, but mostly not. What was the worst question that you were asked? Was it the twin one? Was it the twin question? <laughs> that was just mean. Yeah, that it was, was mean just mean. Stuff. It felt mean. I said it was going to be mean before I said it, though. Mm-hmm. So it was like a no offense, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, the cleats were a little bit out there. Yeah. Um, the, tra- yeah. Yeah. The, the the belief in charging the net no matter what. Inter- Got to. Interesting. Always be charging. That's what they say, ABC. I like the aggressive mentality. Maybe I'll do it more when I play as well. I yeah, love it. Just ha- yeah, just have that as like a mindset, and then you can always throw it away at the last minute, but you'll be more pumped up going to the match. Like, I'm yeah. going to be aggressive. And yes. then my coach is going to be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, I learned this tennis thing from these two guys. <laughs> you never watched tennis? That know nothing about tennis. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Love you guys. Ooh. Ooh. Love you too. Bon chance. I was say, we should take a field trip in August for the U.S. Open. Yeah. Cheer her on. Pass. Yeah. <laughs> Come watch me at the U.S. Open. I'll be there. I'll be there. Gene Bouchard was brought to you by our good friends over at Truebill. How many subscription services are you paying for each month? Do you know? Subscriptions add up, and sometimes we don't notice the monthly deductions from our bank accounts. Until now, there was only one way to figure out what you're paying for every month. That was to lose your debit card. Turns out that's not a sustainable solution. I used Truebill. I found out how much I was paying each month. 
and subscriptions that I don't use. It saved me hundreds of dollars. On average, people save up to 720 bucks a year with Truebill. It's a new app. It helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or the ones that you simply forgot about. You can create a monthly budget and expenses. You can use their tools that help track and evaluate your savings goals. And you can use their automated savings plan so you can choose how much to put away weekly. It's great to have a plan. Hope is not a plan. Using Truebill, that's a plan. Get push notifications when you're getting close to going over your budget or when your cash is running low. I use Truebill. I save money. They have over 2 million users, and they've helped people save over $100 million. Don't fall for the subscription scams. Start canceling them today at Truebill.com take. That's Truebill.com take. Save thousands a year. Truebill.com take. Okay, we now welcome on very special guests. It is the first ever Guys on Guys, and it is with our <laughs> colleagues, Joey and Pat. If you haven't listened, Out and About, their podcast is fantastic. Uh, mostly sports-centric. Correct. Uh, but these guys are the best. They're very, very funny. They are, uh, I would say, like, at this point, this office is pretty much dead, but when you guys are in the office, you can feel it. So that's a compliment. Thank you. And I know you want, we, we had some listener questions, but I know you, Pat, brought a gift for Billy. Well, I know, we sit with Billy. We share a desk. And Billy, by the way, said, so. He's nervous. He, <laughs> you know, he's, nervous. he's nervous. So a lot of times when someone will uh, either be racist or have a slur, they'll be like, oh, I have a black friend or I have a gay friend. Billy actually said, I sit next to two gay guys. So yeah. he definitely says that that's your out. on the weekends. Yeah. He's like. Oh, I can't be racist for using... I can't be homophobic for using this slur. I sit next to two gay guys. Now, also, Billy said that he was a little bit concerned because he's he's fine with uh, all the um, jokes at his expense and yeah. all the flirtation that goes on. There's a lot well, of it's it. two ways. But, don't, don't get it oh, twisted. It's I, I know, two ways, I, and he actually initiates it most I'm of the sure time. He, I'm sure he does. He's, he's like a, a little minx. He bats his eyes at a lot of people. <laughs> but he said he's fine with that off the air, but he doesn't want any of that... In actual content, which is completely backwards than the way that it should be. Well, he's a closet queen. Okay. Oh, that's what we call a closet queen. She does the things behind closed doors, but not in the, not in the open public. Now that's I fine. see him in the in the uh, men's room doing this quite a bit. Tapping. Oh, tapping. Put tapping. his hand underneath yeah, the, old, the yeah. old Larry Craig. Yeah. That's actually my first question. Is that is that a thing? People forget that senator. He was up in like Montana in an airport. And he stuck his foot underneath <laughs> a stall. And tapped his foot to try to get laid, and then he was like, "No, I just have a wide stance." Well, his technique was off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna want to wear a Chelsea boot, or he a was wing in a Timberland. Tip. You're gonna need a Chelsea boot, perhaps a wingtip. Yeah, maybe a triple reinforced heel. Mm -hmm. Wait, and, so um, you're gonna point? Has that like has that ever happened? Yes. And have you ever been like <laughs> not for ever, me? For him, it has. Have you ever been, Joey? Have you ever been like, oh, f that's gross. The guy's wearing like Adidas. Well, no, I I peeked through the crack like a lady. Okay. See what I'm getting myself into. Um, a lot of times, it's not just the men's room. And I, I, one thing I hate about that is I hate having to like get on your knees and like I like, not being on my knees. I'm not a problem with that. No, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a taker. Okay. Um, it's when you have to like stick your dick under the stall. I just like to go. You've into done the that? No, I you, hate you that only one. You service. You've never you've never done the sucking. You've, I can't get that far down. But you've done the service and you haven't been serviced in the hole. I've done both. I'm just curious, like Got it. how the physics of that work. You just well, if there's a hole, the if, there, if there's a glory hole, then oh, the you hole. stick your dick yeah, in the hole. the hole. But if there's not, you have to go under the stall. So you like, like, like squat. <laughs> Ew, that's and spread. Yeah, that's Gross. The not the I, sex part, but yeah. the floor. floor part. Yeah. yeah, not the sex part. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Sex oh, we're sex positive. <laughs> yeah, if there's a hole there, go for it. Yeah, I'm just I, not going to touch prefer, the back Yeah, I prefer just to go into the same stall. I know it says one at a time. But you know I'm a rule breaker. Oh, and I like to live on the edge. All right. So I like to go into the stall with them, so I can really do my my work, my magic. Okay, nice. So Pat, what 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 did you bring for Billy? Who again? He sits next to two gay guys. So if you think he's homophobic, think again. Yeah. Well, Billy is always so, like you said, flirtatious with Joey, and he's always getting bricked up at the desk. He's very high T. <laughs> so we got him a it's little something to help that. take the edge off when he needs it. This is an Arcwave Air Masturbator, Bill. Oh wow. And what there you, you go, do Billy. is you stick your cock in here. And uh, it'll it'll suck it uh, it'll suck it for you. It and sounds like a muffler. It sounds like one. it sounds like a 1994 Honda Civic when you start it up. Yeah. And if you need something for the spank bank, here's a photo of Joey uh, <laughs> at the tunnel in, in 1999, I believe. Yes. So Billy, this is for you. Right before the Thank turn you. of the century. Wow. That's a very that's a, a glamorous looking 
It's very. Masturbate. It's like two hundred dollars. Yeah, like, it looks like cheap. something you'd find in I don't know, like a, a nice store, like a Sears or a Brookstone. Wait, yeah. so that's <laughs> a sharper image in the mall. <laughs> yeah, Joey, <laughs> that's nineteen ninety nine. Where is that? At the tunnel. That's up in the upstairs ba- uh, bathroom, ladies' room, to be honest. And where's the tunnel? It was. It was. It was. Uh, it was on Twenty Eighth Street and Twelfth, right? And Twelfth Avenue. Uh, Billy just, by the way, opened it up and, and gave a good look at the the masturbation. Turn it. So can you turn it on? Yeah, you got to turn it on. Turn it on. It's quite the piece of hardware. It looks like a science project. He'll be using that. That's the, that's the charger. You know what's good about that is I have my desk. My cleaning ladies don't know if it's a speaker or what it is. They, now, they always find my sex Wait, toys. Wait, is this new or used? No. You, okay. so you have to find we out. Open. Okay. <laughs> Just <laughs> ignore, <laughs> ignore the liquid. Now, you want to hold? You want to hold? <laughs> Can I show it to you, Billy? Because I, yeah. I, my confusion was when I when I climaxed in here, I, there's a cup, a reservoir, if you will, <laughs> and I didn't know how to Wait, open in it. Wait, when you said in here, not in this one, in a different no. one. No, in the I studio. Think. Although the seal was twist it. Oh, and that's where all the nut goes. Got oh, it. Oh, I didn't even know that. Now came this is dishwasher safe, okay? And you can feel it, that that's the thing that's gonna make your T- muffle sound. Turn out so I can hear. All right, hold on. Ready? Yeah. Needs to be charged. It's on the back. No. It's on the back, I think. Yeah. Really, sex toys like this should come like two thirds charged. Like no, they iPhones. are charged. I remember I had trouble this last time. One, two, three. Well, maybe it's this one. So you got Bluetooth? <laughs> yeah, I can control this from my desk. Hell yes. Come on, I'll talk about something else. I'll try to start it up. All right, well, let's do questions. We what? have Billy's. Yep. So we usually do guys on chicks where we give advice to women about how to deal with uh, their boyfriends and different women's needs. This will be the first ever Guys on Guys, where we have guys asking questions and we give advice to them. I love it. Yeah. All right. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Forgot one thing. Billy also threw in two questions of his own. You'll have to guess which they are Easy. at the end. Easy work. Yeah. He'll be able to tell. He asks, yeah. He won't stop asking questions at the desk. <laughs> yeah. He's, it on a He's a very curious guy. He goes, hey, when one on guy's charger, taller than the other. <laughs> <laughs> and like, make sure the charger's on. And then we can we can go. We'll do, I'll, we'll do, I'll do an instructional video in the men's room with you. Perfect. <laughs> now I'm gonna grab. I, now I will grab it by the base. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, big coach killer, undefeated in the game of the year's cat, the team formerly known as the Washington PFT. Please don't send me a selfie suit honk, Billy. My hands are no longer weapons. Football, and of course, our golden ghost boy Jake. I love my girlfriend very much. Our sex life is fantastic. But she isn't the best at BJ's, and she loves to give them. How do I tell her to hold her still? <laughs> Tough combo. Tough combo. She isn't the best at BJ's and loves to give them. I think Say you just, just got to take it, right? Wait, keep, yeah, you still got more. How, how do I tell her to hone her skills, look up some tips without sounding like a douche? Love the show, and I think of myself as a man of faith, and there's a drive into deep okay, left field. Okay, so good Ooh. question. He, he's looking for tips on for- blowjobs. So wow. that instructional video. <laughs> is there? Well, I don't I don't know if he's necessarily looking for tips on blowjobs. He's looking for tips as to like what's the best way to, tell to her make her yeah. yeah, to make her want to get better. Cuz it sounds like she likes doing it. Well, I yeah. think I mean communication is the first. Maybe pop on a porno. You know, maybe slide into Johnny's DMs. Copy what do what she's doing. Do what she's doing. You should have a gay guy over to to to, uh, to teach her. Is that the answer? Well, I would slide into your guys' my DMs. What did you Someone think? actually did just slide in my DMs asking us for that. Who? Advice. Probably the same person. Huh. Someone's asking for blowjob advice from us. We can't. Yeah, I don't I know. I would tell her, I love the enthusiasm. Uh, great great enthusiasm on the field. But, you know, we want to do some... some um, you can do a lot. Practice with, moves. Look, mm-hmm. You can do a lot with enthusiasm. Yeah. yeah. Really, but you just got to hone the skills. If the enthusiasm's there, that's half the battle. That I feel is. like 90% of girls and guys don't want to give the blowjob. Mm-hmm. If they want to give the blowjob, Give the blowjob. You just got to coach them through it. Or just have her teeth removed. Or just have or her, have teeth, her removed. teeth removed. Now, we I, are- wait, now, I don't want to get this confused. Joey's not saying knock out all her teeth. Surgically uh, removed. Yeah. 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 By a medical professional. Yes. Well, that could be a fetish as well. <laughs> Munchausen's teeth down her throat and then fuck skull fucker. <laughs> Let's skull fuck. Munchausen's by proxy, if you will. Uh, yes. You just trick her into thinking she has bad teeth. You say, God, you really <laughs> should get your teeth fixed. And then you pull the teeth out. And then, you know, you just never put them back in. Do you think you just start feeding her more foods in, in cone form? Just like if you're making dinner, just make sure. Yeah. foods. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. Is Everything's in a cone or on a stick. And then She'll she get gets the practice. She gets yeah. the reps yeah. in, yeah. Or just show her Maybe, slowly. Yeah, give her, give her a banana. And like every time that she bites, just be like, ow. 
You know how you do that with like your dog motive? when your dog like yep. you know, like you have to like fake like you got bit by your dog if he gets nippy. Wait, what yep. if the guy? What if this guy? Why don't you get a dildo? This is my advice. Why don't you get a dildo and suck the suck the dildo the way you want to be sucked? In front yeah, of her and that, have your right. wife videotape. But then also absolutely... videotape it and then send it to us and yeah. we won't share it with anyone. That I can guarantee will leave an impression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like she will remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is how it's I very went. romantic. Yeah. He's all. He's like. <laughs> now you're gonna want to you're gonna want to lift it up and get right on that that frenulum. Maybe you're gonna put your <laughs> name on the cock on the dildo yeah. just so it's very clear. Have, have we considered the fact that maybe this guy maybe she's not bad at giving head maybe this guy's bad at getting head. Oh, oh yeah. Maybe he's got bad head getting technique. Well now we're victim shaming. Yeah. And that's not really something we like to get into. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bill. Sure both ways. Good, good first question. Next question. What do gay dudes think of tits? Oh, this That's is Billy's Billy question. Billy. That's this, is Billy's, this is the most Billy question That's I've ever question. heard. Oh, great question, Billy. <laughs> what do gay guys think of tits? Well, we have a pair of G's at our desk. I had mine removed. Okay, <laughs> he, had, he had hers removed. I used to have big man tits, and I had them removed. Um, but I think, oh man, I love. I think I'm fascinated by breasts. I love them. I just think the word boobs is funny. Yeah, Flat, like there's so many funny names for boobs, but I enjoy a pair of titties. I think it's, there's nothing funnier than just a, a massively large set of tits. Has I wouldn't want to. Ever... I wouldn't want to touch them. <laughs> no, it, it, it is ever funny. Had milk yeah. Come out when you're sucking on their titties. Have you ever had milk come out of a tit? Have never you tried, had that. Just tried it straight have from you? the tap. No. You have a kid? No, I do. I have two children. But yes. you, you never, you never t uh, took it from from no, the tap. No, <laughs> never took it from the tap. <laughs> Willie Cologne did that. <laughs> Of course he did. Yeah, he's like, he, goes, he goes, I leaned over, I go, baby, I'm thirsty. <laughs> I leaned friend. over and he sucked it right out. But what, I guess a lot of times you have to like unclog the tit, the father does. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. the duct. So you got to get a real sucker on there. Uh, I saw my, uh, really my didn't friend think used the question squirt. was going this way, by the way. My friend used to squirt her, her breast milk like this across the room. Woo. So wait, party so, trick. So Billy's real question is like, you never see tits, and they're like, "Damn, that's hot." Never. They kind of gross me out. Them uh, big udders. Get out of here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So good question, Billy. Billy's next question is: no, are I you, like are, tight are you sure? Packs. I yeah. like them for. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Question yeah. two. <laughs> really? Yeah. And then question three is going to be like, "What about a pussy? Ever want to fuck it? <laughs> what, if, what if they're like real hot tits?" <laughs> okay. <laughs> next question. Uh, I would love to hear Joey tell us what someone looks and sounds like when they're dad presenting. Oh, oh, what is this? Wait a second. They want me to do a straight voice. I think this is what it is. So, okay, so, we have so you this. want to clarify what dad presenting is? Um, we should just talk about what presenting is first. Okay, yeah. yeah. So like we are, you're like you're like straight bro presenting, mask daddy presenting. What you're you like, appear as? You're, what you appear as? You're mm -hmm. like. Like a stoner. like chill vibe, like stoner presenting, like not, cool not guy. Not a drug guy though. Not a drug guy. Yeah. Billy is, you know, bro presenting, frat bro presenting. And on our show, we always talk about what we're presenting as for the day. And then he does straight presenting. He does a straight voice. Mm -hmm. So I think is that what they want you to do? I I'm confused. So. Yeah, I think so. Um, and but dad presenting would be a, like a, uh, a like maybe a gay guy that looks like he's a father. Right. Well, there's dad bods. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, rip. Let the voice rip. Talk about the game last night. Hey, hey, you catch a game last night, bro? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Okay, good start. start. Okay, good start. all right. Wait. We're not live, right? Yeah, good start. Yeah. <laughs> I have to get to character. <laughs> um, what can I give me a conversation? Did you see about? fucking Kyrie last night flipping yeah. off the crowd? Oh man, I fucking saw that shit. I don't know. F fair thing about Kyrie is it's like the dude's fucking. Whack as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just fucking gets in the game and starts fucking throwing the ball down the wrong side of the court. I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? <laughs> All right, yeah, you crushed that. <laughs> End scene. End <laughs> scene. <laughs> These are available at the store. Correct. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you guys got so new merch. Also, listen to Out and About. Um, Pat actually came, visited the beach house last summer. I did. And the guy that was renting it out to us turned out to be an out and about listener. So he, he called me the next day and he was like, uh, hey, heard uh, somebody talking about my house on one of the podcasts. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck. What did he say? Oh. But you guys were actually very complimentary. I think Fights was just talking up his interior design game. Yeah, it was a beautiful house. It's too bad we didn't do it earlier. They could have saved you 5000 bucks. I know. <laughs> or whatever, I know. whatever it was. It's free ice cream. Billy? Well, free ice cream. Free ice cream. <laughs> What you what were you gonna oh, say sorry. to Billy? Oh, we were just having a side conversation. Oh, yeah, I'm about merch too. The Mam sweatshirt, which I ruined during the case race. I'll give you another one. Yeah. I saw it in the trash. I go, who threw this out? <laughs> and and I picked it up. It was covered in paint. Yeah, paint and you know whatever sweat, grossness. All right, next one. What's up, Dad Cat, Ghost to PFT, Poppy Pat, and Big J Joey? Why do my bros not want me to want them to fuck? I'm Wait, sorry. What? Why do this my bros? Question. 
<laughs> no, 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 I'm reading exactly what he said. Why do my bros not want me to want them to fuck? Why they bonk they? me when I try to encourage them to hit up chicks or when I ask if their night was successful. Can a dude not enjoy knowing his boy, his bros are bricked up? <laughs> I am happily married, so I will admit I try to live vicariously through their single lives. He wants to suck the girl. But no, they're not. Yeah, he wants to. He wants to I, I was going through this exact thought process in about the eighth grade. Okay. But they are very weirded out by it. Thanks, Honk. I hope Jake didn't cringe when you tried to pronounce vicariously. I love this guy. I mean, he he's just a horny. He, he's he's cock hungry. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> he's married, and they always yeah. they always preface that oh, well, I'm married. Like so, it's like we that we get more fucking questions. Everyone sets every guy straight guy listens. Goes uh, just so I'm straight and I'm married, but I, find you so <laughs> I just want to let you know. Like, like, like I this listen, is the weirdest but I'm fucking straight. thing. But I listen. This is what's going on here. He he is not living vicariously. He is cock hungry, and he <laughs> it's wanted, very simple. Dear. He, 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 he can't joke. He doesn't want to do it to his wife, and he he, he didn't explore till later in life. He wasn't ready to explore till later in life, and now it's too late for him because he doesn't want to cheat on his wife. Um, I would just tell your wife you need to get a cock in you for like <laughs> maybe one day. Just get it out of your system and then go back to back to your wife. He needs to get fucked. That's what he's just, uh, just rip the bandaid. I, I do yeah. like him say like I'm married, but it's like you're talking to your lawyer and nothing that you can say after that is yeah. inadmissible in court. Yeah. I'm married, but point. every once in a while I go right to that LaGuardia airport <laughs> yeah. and I tap my foot. There's but, also I I don't know he he sounds like to me. Maybe the friend who got married first, because that is a yes. creepy thing to walk around to your to your buddies being like, "Yo, did you fuck last night?" Like being, "Where'd you shoot? Where'd you shoot?" It. Yeah, Where, yeah, yeah. You get like, too detailed. Go? Do you have any left I can taste? <laughs> you can root for them without having to ask them every time and having it be a little bit creepy. Right. We that, asked Hank one time, and that was one time too many. What'd yeah. you ask? What'd you ask? Did you what'd fuck? You, did you fuck? <laughs> what did he say? He just like, he went into de- Hank went into detail. He just looked at me and said, "What is that, Hank <laughs> behind the screen?" No, Hank's your boss, Joey. He's oh. upstairs. He wears a suit. He I can fire him. you at the drop of a hat. That's I know. True. Who's behind the screen? Though? That's memes. Can I see his face? Oh, smash your pass. Didn't he used to work in here though, Hank? <laughs> yeah, years ago. Then, yeah, many moons ago. Mm-hmm. You guys want to walk us real quick through like how you guys met each other and how Joey came on the podcast? We met through KFC through Kevin. Yeah, I was bottoming for Kevin. <laughs> and I was filming. Yeah. And then, next thing you know, no, he was in for Answer the Internet with Snooki back in the day. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing my show when I first started it. And I thought about having Snooki on. And they said she's not available, but her best friend is available. And I go, oh, per-. I go, well, I guess we can get him in. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. And then he came in and we just instantly hit it off. And then um, he kept hosting and hosting and hosting. And then they ended mm-hmm. up bringing him on full time. And, and that's pretty much it. How, that's it. What? You guys kissed on stage. How'd that do for the podcast? Oh. Should PFT and I kiss? Um, I would. I would love if you'd kiss yeah. right now. Even. Good but I don't want to put no, the pressure. We, well, on. we, we don't do want to put yeah. a year. Yeah. So yeah. on January thirtieth, it's Big Cat's birthday. You do thirty. Wow. The thirty-first six kisses. <laughs> the thirty-first is my birthday. January so it's 31st? like at midnight, it changes over from his birthday to my. So we play suck and blow. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, we would need to do that. Re- suck and blow. Have we played that for? No. Was, it's so much fun. But how did it go for the podcast? Like, it, I'm not great. Yeah. <laughs> now, were we talking for the mental health of yeah, us mental both? Health yeah. Or the, the or the actual it was, show? It, was, it definitely recovered. helped. It, it helped. definitely yeah. helped. It, it put us on the map. Yeah. They loved it so much. The women in the crowd like went nuts. We were like, oh, we'll like do like that guy was probably in the crowd watching. Yeah. The guy was probably in the jerking he was probably, off. Yeah, he was probably yeah. jerking off in the crowd. They went so crazy when we kissed on there. It was like, well, because they know I haven't had sex in twenty years. Oh, right. we don't want to get into that. You know, he hasn't had sex since twenty fourteen. Really? Why? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm emotionally damaged and I can't trust a man. Got it. Billy, so you tried you know, chicks. You know why? That was Billy's <laughs> next question. <No. laughs> Have you yeah. tried chicks? I would. You tried woman? Would I, you, I want you to. Would you bottom for a woman? No, I would want to stick it in her. Oh. He actually fingered his friend on the couch once. Her name is Jen. <laughs> on what, Just hey, to see what it felt like, he did th- on, he did this at a, at a Christmas party. <laughs> that was on my it was in my sectional from Jennifer Convertibles. <laughs> yeah, um, and I kept giggling so she couldn't finish. I felt defeated. Oh. <laughs> Joey, by the way, also has maybe the best bio on BarstoolSports.com. Thank you. If you go to the blogger page, by the way, you're wearing an Iron Maiden cutoff shirt. Yeah. That that's just fashion right there. It says, "Hi, my name is Joey Camasta. I'm a celebrity makeup artist turned comedian. I'm the co-host of Out and About and soon to be host of a top secret makeup project. I moonlight as an <laughs> amateur chef, and my three favorite things are big dicks, fried chicken, and impeccably chilled Sauvignon Blanc. True that. <laughs> that's great. True that. Preach. I love those things." When's the last time you had fried chicken or a big dick? Mm, in what order? I had fried chicken last night and Sauvignon Blanc. Now I'm just missing the dick. Billy? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what's up out and about? 
Joker. Can two gay dudes put their dicks in each other's butts at the same time? <laughs> Wait, what? Now that's a, that's called this Billy. This is you. No, yeah. it's not. I Billy, this has out. we go from boobs to this. This was next level. Like no, no, Billy no. wanted to go one level deeper with I'm, it. I'm, I'm I'm like I'm puzzled right. I'm like, Wait. are we talking about a classic DP? <laughs> no, no. Two, like your my dick in your ass guys, and your dick in my ass at the same time. Oh, if you can bend it, probably. Yeah, you have to have. I, I'd imagine Wait. that like you, you have, have to, to have a scissor. One, one person who's blessed needs to be involved in this at least, right? <laughs> who's big boned? Yeah, because. I don't know the anatomy. How this would you do it physically? No, you, you can't do that unless could. you unless you extend your dick like all the way down, and then like you went in, you like almost like knife. What each position other. would you be in? You'd, You'd be, be like both sitting on, on each other. Yeah. Okay, I think I got it. It's one guy on his back, <laughs> and then the other guy on top of him, reverse cowboy. But his style. ass is on the floor then. Oh yeah. No, but but he's sitting butt on top of this, but then he's got to have like a, a yeah. big long. long oh, he's got to have a, 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 a bendy dick. Yeah. yeah. That like maybe eight, even boomerang. angles down. Yeah. 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 It's ba back to back kind of. Yeah. yeah. It could happen. It could happen. I'm sure if you search Pornhub, it's on there. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Billy's writing that down. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's adding us to his list of experts <laughs> for this specific topic. Uh, uh, how do you make new friends in your 30s? Thanks, PMT. Oh, this is a good guys on guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a tough one because I have been trying. Oh, God. Friends in your 30s. If the people you – the f obvious answer is people you work with. That's mm -hmm. like the easiest way to make friends. Yeah. But a lot of people who they work with suck and you don't want to be friends with them, especially if you're in your 30s. It's that, that weird age where like the people above you are like, you know, maybe they're upper management in their 40s. Hank. Yeah. Hank. You know, maybe yeah. they're a suit. They're fast-tracked like Hank. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful what you say. You can never really mm -hmm. open up with them. Right. Or yeah. if they're younger like Gen Z, you can't relate there either. I think just go out to the bar and you I make said friends that. all the time. He'll go out and like he'll party with people till 11 in the morning who he met Strangers. the night before. I think the best way to do it is high noon happy hour. Or of course, America. Like, for Barcelona versus America. Barcelona versus America. Or, yeah, or that. But well, yeah, so uh, Joey, you, you're a social butterfly. Yeah. How do how well, it's is drug it just, induced? Okay. Yeah, that's so there. There's your answer. Now, would folks. you really, are those like are those friends that you make? Or are those no. like people that you have an awesome night with? Well, the, there's a difference. Oh, no, they're, they're awesome. I never hear them see them from them again most of the times. So I get so many text messages like, oh, like hey, like midweek. I don't know who the fuck this person is, but they're on my phone. So I always have to take pictures of the person while I'm <laughs> fucked up, so I remember and put them on the phone, so I remember who it is and how I correlation. Ninety percent of the time, I'm going out to people. Some, someone is trying to blow a straight guy. Facts. Mm -hmm. That's 90%. 90%. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. That's a very high percentage. And then, and then whatever ensues after that initial like contact. So either I'm like on my journey to like, I just have to keep like with a straight guy keeping up with him, trying to keep suck him off. And then I run into friends with his and girlfriends of his. And then it trickles out from there. But and the girlfriends know him. And then yeah. they're like, oh my God, we're it's such a always big starts with you. me trying it's to sneaky. trying to He's blow a straight guy. You, okay. you do sound like a salesperson almost. You were even like reaching out to Pat and like touching him because you, you like, you almost have to schedule your contacts just to like pop up again and be like, hey, it's me. Yeah, yeah. And then you're moving them closer and closer to closing them yeah. as like a, a done deal. Yeah, so I mean, exactly. so just just to put a button on it, try and blow them. Try to blow them. Try to blow try your to friends. Try to blow some mm -hmm. dudes and you'll try meet and a lot of new people. Yeah, or ha what about a singles mixer for like friends? Do they have those? Publicity show. Go to a comedy show by yourself. Comedy show. Go to a bar no, by yourself. No, don't go to, no one does that. No one Go to the rank ramble. It's hard. I've got, I've got it's two hard. suggestions, and you guys can give me feedback on this. Is there a loop on this? Somebody, thing? somebody hit me up and said a way to get around this loop, or a way to get around the problem of not having any friends in your thirties, is to buy a boat. Mm. I think that's, I think that's actually a genius move. Oh. Now every other part about buying a boat sucks, but it will get you friends. Fake friends. Fake friends. Well, you friends. don't need real yeah. friends. You yeah. just need fake friends. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to. You don't want to open up that emotional damage. And, yeah, that's right. Also, fake friends are actually the best friends. Yeah, and, and fake friends are way better than real friends. And eventually, mm -hmm. fake friends, you just lie to each other long enough that you become real friends. Right. Yeah. Right. You don't want to let someone in. No. That's yeah. the worst thing Never. you can do. All right, Billy. Why don't you do two more? All right. Uh. What are poppers? Oh. Do you want to go grab <laughs> some from your handbag? I can't, I could go grab them, but it's like white out. Not not white out. It comes in like a white out thing. It's you sniff it and it loosens up your asshole. It's the thing you Got might have, you might have seen like on the street uh, on like a Sunday morning. You go for a walk, maybe take the dog outside. There's tiny little metal uh, metal canisters that are laying down next to the curb. Those are whippets. Those are whippets. Oh, is that different than poppers? Yeah, yeah no, poppers yeah. are it's, it's liquid. Like, it's it's ammonium thing. nitrate. That's what like poppers are, big, right? Yeah. It's yeah. a jar and you, you sniff it like this and it's the funnest thing ever. You just laugh uncontrollably for like, the way it does it, it lo uh, loosens up your blood vessels so like, um, the blood just rushes through your body so you have this orgasmic like rush 
That through sounds your whole very body. unhealthy. Oh, it's it it's is, it's yeah. you're it sniffing like, pure chemicals. Yeah, it's not say, good. It is not good for you like at all. Sniffing something to have it loosen up your blood vessels cannot be healthy. No, no, and especially it comes with like a like the, it oh. looks like a Chernobyl sign on it, like radioactive. <laughs> That's makes but you go better. into any gay club, people are sniffing this stuff. He only jerks off with pop. I only jerk, I, have to, I have to do it every time I masturbate. Otherwise, it won't work. Right now, Billy's thinking of ways that this could be used for like yeah. working out. I'll get sounds no, like a vasodilator. It basically gives yeah. you a hump, man. Yeah. I'll give it to you at the desk. You can try and see what you think of it. Does it give you a boner? No. It doesn't give you a boner, but if you're jerking off and you're like, you sniff it, it's like, uh, you just want to, you can, it just makes you come. Like, you can't. It makes your face it. like hot and heavy. It's, but it's, but it's okay. not good Does for it, you. Like, do you have a hangover from it? Is it feel no. like shit after? It's like 30 no. seconds. It's like 30 Got seconds. It. So but, it's, it's like chemical cocaine. Yes, mm. a little bit. Yeah, but more, it's more euphoric than cocaine. Okay. It's, it's like more like more like an ecstasy, a sniffable ecstasy. Right. Got it. Is it like smelling salts? It's exactly like that, but it, just, it feels much better than salts. It doesn't salts. hurt. It doesn't hurt. It makes no. your face, your face feels like a really, like a mercury balloon. Can you overdose oh, on that's it? That's not good. Can you what? No. Can you overdose <laughs> on it? Um, no. I'm sure you can just pass out if, if anything, but you're not, you can't overdose on it. Well, well I'm trying. Uh, just... Joey's not a medical professional. Just wants to. Oh right, right. True that. Someone just fucking disclaimer. Like I did of, it in my whole. A bunch of like twenty-two-year-old bros in college are just <laughs> popping and all dying. It's but like, if you do well, want to get a part of my day. if you do want to get fucked in the ass, so it does help because it's, it loosens, it makes you very um, relaxed. Got it. Okay. Last question. This has been fun. We'll have you guys back on for sure. Thank you. Depending on the, I think people will like. I this. think people are gonna like. There'll this. be a few people who are like this was terrible, and I'll be like, sports. Oh, they're yeah, terrible. Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah, Joey, give us one more uh, uh, sports take for in your dad presenting. Give me this topic. Uh, do uh, fuck the NFL I, draft's I, coming up. NFL draft coming up. Say the NFL. Say I'm really looking forward to the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be sick. I'm getting my script. Kenny Pickett and, and Malik Willis are two quarterbacks that are going to be Kenny picked. Pickett uh, and Malik Willis. Make a decision on that. Are the Giants going to get a quarterback this year? Uh, I think I'm they fucking might hoping, man. We fucking finally get a quarterback on that fucking team? <laughs> <laughs> it's been years. I know. Uh, what was it? The draft? Well, Can we got to see what the fucking the draft coming up. <laughs> maybe, we're, maybe we'll get ourselves a fucking quarterback. It'd be nice, right? <laughs> Kenny Pell, what was her name? Ke Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett. Fuck Kenny Pickett, man. He's got, he's, got, <laughs> he's got tiny hands. Smallest hands in the draft. He's a friend of the show, so. <laughs> yeah, Wait, nice. is that. Oh, we love that, him. We love is him. Is the draft? No, what, the combine. That's where they all walk in their underwear across yeah. the stage. Mm -hmm. that oh, he's already? watched that yes. before. He, uh, that's in end of February. Oh, it happened already. Yeah. Uh, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall there. I said to him today, I go, why don't we tell them we're, we want to talk about the Celtics Nets series? And he goes, is that a band? <laughs> <laughs> Billy, did you ever, when you played football, did you ever have to do that? Walk across the stage in boxer briefs? Uh, no. no. We yeah. can, wanna, You're just saying. Do you want to do a reenactment today? That'd be funny. No. We can film it. <laughs> no, no, cool. Joe, you don't watch any sports? I know Pat like. No, I watch base. Sports. I watch all the sports that are on. So, like, you know, my friends all watch sports. So Collegiate I watch. wrestling. Got it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's how I discovered Gable Stevenson. Yeah. Have you, seen pa have you seen Pat on a basketball court? No. He's, he's the best he's... basketball player in the office. He's oh, sick. wow. I wear many different hats. No, I'm serious. Like, he's incredible basketball. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. I haven't heard. He looks like Larry Bird. That's That makes an honor. That, was just, that like was just a white guy playing basketball. Yes. That was all. No, that was sport. Right. You should have done you that in straight voice. Like so would have taken Bird. it away. He um, looks no, like Larry. Bird. Looks like Rick Smith. <laughs> I like baseball though because you can see their faces. And football, they wear those silly hats. You can't see their faces. Well, baseball players are are caked up. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're very that? underrated. Did you see the guy oh, get hit? Yeah. He sent it to me before it went viral. <laughs> it, it happened, and somehow it shows up. His algorithm on TikTok is disgusting. It showed up on his TikTok, and he sent it to me like. As they were like getting ready for yeah. the next pitch, it was in my phone. Amazing. Yeah, baseball players' asses are just. Yeah. I, I feel like they've gotten bigger even oh, over the last ten sure. years. You're damn right. <laughs> Boys, I have a buddy that loves the Key and Peel slap ass skit even to this day. At least a couple times a month, will slap my ass as hard as he can and say the iconic phrase "slap ass" or the occasional "good game." Am I a bad bro if I tell him he can't slap my ass? It's not just me; it's nearly our entire friend group. Thanks. Bruised cheeks. Well, would you rather have him finger your ass? <laughs> I'd have him slow down and incorporate a squeeze, first of all. Um, no, yeah, maybe because it hurts. Probably because it hurts. A slap ass. There's a, a, a very thin line between a slap ass being gay and it being a sports tap. If you're going mm -hmm. hard, it's a tap. But if you linger, which is what I tend to do, uh, it can become sexual. If you cup, cup, if you cup it can become I think sexual. You, I think you got to go. Fl yeah, if it's a flat hand, that's a that's yeah. a. Ass tap. Yeah, once the fingers if it's start a cup, bending, yeah, then it's a cup with a with a wandering pinky. Yeah, you're yeah. trying to do something more. <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah. whenever guys like touch each other, we also have to make sure that we're hurting them a little bit at and the same time, no <laughs> just true. to make sure that they know that we're being mm -hmm. straight. We're like, hey, hey, what's up, buddy? And just yeah. like hit the fuck out or of him. Or net tap. Yeah, just hit him in the dick. 
I want to touch your dick, but I also I want to I want to hurt it. I did like the the, the no homo uh, f- uh, like phrase is no longer PC, but I always thought it was funny oh, when I a dude it. would be like, "Yeah, I love that guy, no homo." It's like you could just say you love him, yeah. and, then that, and then that evolved into pause. Yeah, pause. Yeah. Pause, yeah. Is, pause, pause is, is funny. Pause, pause is, funny. is the new. Yeah, that that is true. We should start saying pause around the office. What does pause mean? Pause means no homo. Yeah, or it's well, like if someone says something, it's like, "Well, pause." I'm like when a, Billy looks at you, like during the day, with that like lingering eye, you say pause. Like well, when I, I tell it, Rico oh. that I'll come in his hole. Yes, or people will be like, "Pause." Oh, I only know "pause up" from Lady Gaga. What's oh, that? The Monsters. Ma- pa- yeah. Pause. Monsters. Yeah. What That's do you true. guys do with that bingo machine? We uh, uh, do a lottery. We're you want to do it right now. You want to pick a number? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Pick any number, one through one hundred. I want thirty-eight. Oh, okay. Twenty-four. Was, uh, twenty-two. Eight. Billy, Six, memes? 69. Ooh. Three, six, four. four. Everyone just got to remember their own because I never remember Dude. whose numbers are what. If you guys got this on the first try, that means you actually get part of my take. Oh, good. <laughs> 54. Is, ooh, no, that was 24. Very close. Teddy Bruschi. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Um, thank Joey, you. Pat, out and about. Go listen. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> guys on guys. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have you back on, and we appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank Thanks, you for having us. It's an honor. And if Billy gives you any shit, just let us know. Yeah. Promise. All right. Yeah. Now, Bill, that should be able to turn on by now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>